Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to begin this meeting of the Syracuse Planning Commission. Momentarily, we will start with our public hearings for this evening, but before we do so, we have two brief items of business to take care of, namely the minutes from our two preceding meetings uh, when we were unable to adopt our minutes at the last meeting. So is there a motion for action on one or the other or both of our October 9th and October 29th uh, minutes? Well, maybe we should take them separately because of the absences involved. I would move to approve the minutes of the October 9th meeting. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? The October 9th minutes are approved. Is there a motion on the October 29th minutes? Likewise, I move to approve the minutes of the October 29th, 2018 meeting. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay, and our October 29th minutes are approved. We are now set to begin tonight's business with our public hearings. They will be announced uh, from the podium. And for those of in the audience who may not be familiar with our process, as each application is announced, we will ask the applicant or their representative to come forward to the uh, podium to provide their name and address for the record, as well as a brief summary of the application. Following any questions from the commission members, we will then ask members of the public who wish to speak in favor of the application to do so, and then we will offer an opportunity for members of the public who wish to speak in opposition to the application to do that as well. And where there are comments made in opposition, we will encourage the applicant to return to the podium to address those comments made in opposition. We do have a lot of hearings scheduled uh, for this evening, so I would just ask those who wish to speak either for or against a specific proposal uh, to keep their comments concise and not to repeat those that might have preceded them because they'll already be reflected in the record. So with that, Heather, would you please introduce our first application tonight? Good evening, Commission members. Mr. Kulik, the first public hearing PR 1835, this is a project site review for new construction. This is to construct an addition onto what is known as the Amos Building at 214 West Water Street. Syracuse Soma Project LLC is the owner and the applicant, and the property lies within a central business district, office, and service zoning district. This uh, proposal is uh, on hold. We have not received all of our seeker responses. If you recall, the last meeting you uh, declared yourself with intent to act as lead agency under Seeker. I did send out those letters, but we have not received any back, so we need to wait for that. And the applicant is um, also uh, in ongoing discussions with respect to design with the Preservation Board. So if anyone is here for 214 West Water Street to speak in favor or against, I do need to announce that because it was published in the paper. Um, but the applicant is not here and the project is not ready to move forward at this time. And just for clarification, when the applicant is ready and all the materials are completed, it will be re-advertised as it was the first time, correct? That's right. We are requesting it to be on your authorization list for December in anticipation that it will be ready. So if there is anyone here to speak in favor of that application, please come forward. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the application? If so, please come forward. So no speakers this evening, but as just outlined, we anticipate this will be back on our agenda on December 10th. The same sorts of opportunities will be extended to the applicant and to the public at that time if all the materials are complete then. Okay. <clears throat> yes, so the next two public hearings are companion pieces, R1843. This is a resubdivision. Uh, this is a continuation from September 17th and also October 9th. This is to combine three properties into one new lot at 1202 and 1200 and a half Willis Avenue and also 959 Emerson Avenue. Basma Musharbash is the owner and applicant, and it's industrial class A. The companion piece to that is the facade and site alterations, which is in the form of a project site review. That's PR 1832. 
and again, facade and site alterations to 1202 and 1200 and a half Willis Avenue, and also 959 Emerson Avenue. Basma Musharbash is the owner and applicant, and this is industrial class A zoning district as well. The applicant is here, please come forward. My name is Joe Mastri. I am the engineer for the project. I'm representing the uh, owner and the applicant. The, <coughs> excuse me, the first part of what uh, Heather talked about, we have a parcel here, a parcel here, and we have this parcel. We're looking to combine those three parcels. This is on Willis Ave. This is Emerson back here. Um, so they're looking to combine all three parcels in. They have commercial over here. There's commercial across the street. There's a towing lot in the front here that belongs to the people across the street. There are two residences here. They are currently owned by Syracuse Land Bank. Um, they're going to be up for you know whatever. Uh, there is an encroachment on the back area here from these two houses, but it's not presenting a problem. The, my client wants to take the existing building at 1,200 and a half and turn the top portion, which is from Willis Ave, uh, into a neighborhood grocery store, okay? I want to stress that all the deliveries, entrances, everything else would be from Willis Ave. There's nothing from the back here. If you see along here, there's a, it says existing fence and concrete wall. This right here is quite a drop off. You wouldn't be able to go down into there onto uh, Emerson or anything. I knew in the past there were some questions regarding that. To comply with, um, parking and everything else, we're going to have two handicapped spots up front here, and we're going to put in more uh, just regular traditional parking spots over six of them over here altogether. So there'll be eight total. Okay, this area here right now is, it's a mix. It's crushed gravel, it's stone, it's bare ground, or some grass, it's a mix. This would be paved. This area here would get a topsoil layer on top of it and grassed. To comply with the uh, city's requirements for boundary treatment. We're going to be putting Arborvite along this side on the property line. This whole area here, I've got some pictures. This whole area here is just overgrown. It's all brush. So we feel that's enough to limit having to put anything on that side. On this side next to the house, we would be putting up a um, six foot high wood stockade fence. The only place that we have questionable, and I talked to Jeff Harrop and he says to bring it up with the board or with the uh, commission here. Back here, since there is a slight um, encroachment onto this area, putting any kind of fence here, this is how these people come out. And the ones that would live there, they would frequently come out and walk over here and just walk out the street. If there was any kind of a emergency situation, namely a fire or anything else, we're concerned about putting a fence right near there, how that might limit their access. And Jeff said that might be an acceptable concern and, and to be have it waived is to not do it. But we'll leave that up there. Uh, like I said, so just doing the top portion, which is from here up, that's it. The curb cut that exists goes from here to here. It is shared by, it's mostly on our property here, on the applicant's property, but the guy that does the uh, KC, the auto parking lot, he pulls in, backs in, drops cars from his wreckers, and he pulls out. So this is an established. Willis Ave was done, uh, my understanding from the neighbors, about two years ago, total reconstruction. And that's when the curbing was put in where it's put in. And also at that time, this area here was paved then by the city. I guess that was grass or whatever, you know, stones and grass. And the city opted, I guess, at that time to pave up to um, pretty well up there. If you go out there, you'll see you can tell where there's a seam where pavement starts and stops. It is a continuous pavement all the way up to the corner. So one of the questions was about 
the applicant digging this up and putting grass there. It was just paved over like two years ago, so our question would be why would we do that? Um, so anyway, that's that. The interior of the store is going to be, like I said, a typical neighborhood grocery store entrance here. It's going to be um, like a deli area over here. There's not going to be any food prepared and sold out of there, but it's going to be a deli to buy cold cuts and stuff. Just racking uh, some fruit stands and a storage room back here, and there will be a cooler over on this side. And that's basically it. Uh, this portion has gone through, or is going through, for a building permit, and I just did a submission the other day to, to the department, and Brian Thompson, and we basically have everything addressed that he wanted addressed down there, but I wanted to show the board what it was. And that's basically an overview of the project. So once again, to just stress, everything is going from Willis Ave, nothing is coming in from Emerson. And that's basically the hours of operation will be um, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week. Um, and there will be approximately three to four people employed there as a result. Okay, thank you. I neglected to say at the beginning that we're hearing, as we often do, two companion cases, one for the resubdivision, the other for the um, uh, project site review for the convenience that it allows all the speakers to address concerns from either application in one presentation. And when it comes time for uh, action, the commission will act separately on each of those two items. So I should have say, stated that at the outset, but um, I think you've covered all that. And um, thank you for the presentation. I'll we'll pause now and see if there are questions from the commission members. Are there? Uh, yes. Thank you. So along, along Willis Avenue, um, and I, I can't tell from your photos, and I can't tell from Google. Is there, um, is there a curb line? Is there a curb? Yes, yes. Right here we have full height granite curbing. It's right on the drawing. And what is that dimension for that open curb cut right there? It's here. Uh -huh. It's about, I think it's about 38 feet. Um... I had talked to the, sorry, I don't mean to. No, no, go ahead. I talked to the um, deputy commissioner, I can't think of that, of the uh, uh, DPW, and he had said that since this had served or was serving two properties, they just combined into one opening. As Because ah. we at the last meeting, or two meetings ago, we had talked about that. I called him and he said, if you need me to do a curb cut, he said, I'll do a curb cut. But he says, you've got one that serves two now. So that's why we're you know trying to work with what we have. Like I said, that's more than adequate for us and for the guy dropping cars over here. And you said 30 something? Right, it's like 38 something like that. Okay. Um, the, there's another concern that was mentioned by the city's transportation planner, and much like the city staff, the commission has to consider the entire property. Yeah. So there's a question about the driveway that does face onto Emerson, and it's supposed to only be uh, a 12 foot curb cut. And he was asking that that would be addressed we had, part of the project? We had a meeting back in June uh, up in the uh, zoning's office uh, to go through the project and do a kickoff. Okay. Uh, the person from transportation was Neil Burke, and he addressed or he brought up those questions and concerns. Uh, and they're, beside those, they're quite lengthy as everything else that he'd like to see. Um, Mr. Kearney was there, Owen, and we went through that and I had stated what it was going to cost to do everything that was wanted on the entire project. And then I got contacted by Mr. Kearney. Um, I give this letter to Jeff. Let's copy. At that point, uh, Mr. Kearney said that the, whatever's listed on there is not required at this time. He says, we're not going to make you do all that. Uh, because nothing else similar is done on any of the other properties. We don't keep bringing this up. There was a competitor across the street who's opened in the past two years who has done none of those things at all, and they're totally fine. They got a you know, building permit and everything else. So those comments were not addressed because of what Mr. Owen or Mr. Kearney had told us. Okay, so 
we have those in your letter, but in his staff report, we don't have anything like that from Owen to us. But also, as far as I know, he can't really waive those things, can he? I didn't think so. He had, he had talked to somebody and he gave me a call and he said these following items, he says, you're not going to be required to do. That's why I put that letter together at that time, just to follow up on. I, I, right, right, no, I, I appreciate that, but I'm not sure under what authority no, I understand. he did I that. So understand. typically when we've reviewed requests like this regarding parking and mm -hmm. its relationship to a public right of way, we've always, we've attempted to be consistent and make sure that where there's supposed to be public sidewalk, there's not asphalt, that there's a separation between um, that if there's a planting strip required, that that's also included, that there's, um, that features are included in the site plan to prevent people from going from a parking lot and increasing. Yeah, those, 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 those things right were discussed and I, and I asked the board to do some, some degree of thought on them. Mr. Burke kept bringing up that people are going to jump the curb to get into the parking lot. And I don't know how many places people actually jump a curb to drive into a parking lot. These are six to eight inch high curbs. I mean, you have enough well, here. That, that might be his partially his concern. Yeah. I think the other concern is where you have your parking. And I know now you've, you're showing three trees there or yeah, three yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. I think it's actually the opposite. It's that people who, act, who use the curb cut <clears throat> men would encroach from the property into the public right of way to park, not that they would necessarily jump the curb. Okay. Yeah, he was, he was worrying about So, that. so, um, also, what what's the material of your parking? You're gonna is that? This gonna is going to be asphalt. Okay, and is there a curb that's going to be there, so that his concern would be addressed? In other words, somebody can't jump we off can, the asphalt. We can we can gladly curb it. We can put um, or or wheel stops things, or, or or even the they call it kick up with the asphalt. So when they do the asphalt, it right? They do a, they do a roll yeah, curb. Yeah, that, right. Um, Okay, so that, that's that concern. And then again, there's the, the concern that on the residential street, it should be only a 12 foot wide curb cut for a 12 foot wide driveway. And I realize your client might not be using it, but we have to look at the whole property. Well, so. like I said, we'll do what needs to be done. Okay. If you go further back on Emerson, you got a place that works on buses and trucks. Their opening is like 50 foot wide. Yeah, again, I think what, right. what we need to do is we need to consider the application that's before us. Right, I know. We're saying since nothing has been done around it to concur with that. Got to, got to start some point. Nope. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and the other question was, no, maybe that was the last question I had. Okay, I think that was the last question I had. So I defer to my colleagues. Okay, we're set with questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium. Is there anyone who? Maybe. Oh, sorry. It's me. Our, our first meeting. Mrs. Varga, who owns a few houses on Emerson Ave, complained about the traffic jam we are going to cause on Emerson Ave if we open a store. In matter of fact, we have nothing to do with Emerson Ave. She didn't know the main entrance to the building is on Willis Ave. Customers and deliveries will be going in and out on Willis Ave. I wish Mrs. Varga explores the, the, the geographic location of Emerson Ave and Willis Ave. Instead, exploring, instead she, exp she was exploring my life story in our second meeting. Well, she didn't. She doesn't even live in this area. She doesn't care where these people go shopping. They have to walk almost a mile to get some vegetables or fruits, because none of the exist existing stores carry vegetables nor fruits. If we open a store. We are going to carry vegetables and fruits. 
Well, in our second meeting, Mrs. Varga forgot about the traffic jam and the lack of security we are going to cause. Instead, she got per personal and she started telling me my life story. I would like to thank her for that. It was nice of her. But she forgot we, we were here in the first place I would, I would like to remind her that I came here to conduct business with educated, intelligent people and not to tell each other life stories. One thing I want to mention, without mentioning any names, I was never arrested for buying food stamps from poor people, 50 cents on the dollar and went to jail for two years for food stamps fraud. I have a lot more stories, but I didn't come here to, t to for that reason. Beside, the, the Councilman Ryan joined Mrs. Varga by telling me my life story Councilman Ryan, your area is very depressed area. I saw more, many boarded up houses for lack of security and the drugs that overcome your district. Mr. Councilman, why don't you try to do better things for your district, like bringing new businesses to your area? I know some councilmen travel the country trying to bring new businesses to their area. Your area got much worse in the last 20 years I was there. And here, a business coming to your doorstep and you are turning it down. I hope you can differentiate between business meeting and social consultations. Some people accuse me of doing some work in the building without permit. Well, this is a lie, a false accusation because the inspector from the city code enforcement came and inspected the place four times and he didn't find anything I did needs permit. And I would challenge anybody to find anything I did that needs permit. And I didn't do it, do it without permit. Well, by opening a store in this area will help revive the area and not to depress, depress it further. Besides, if we open the store, like I said in the last meeting, we are going to generate sales tax, sales tax for the city of Syracuse and generate cash flow between seven to eight companies we are going to deal with. Besides, our country thrives on competitions. And as you know, Competitions bring prices down and qualities up. I don't know why somebody would, would be afraid of competitions as long as we play it clean and fair. This operation is going to be family-run business and not a stockholder company. It's a man It's a man, dad, uh, yeah. It's a man, dad, and daughter. Uh, it's a mom, and dad, and daughter store. And two or three workers from the area. 
please let us have some common sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there other individuals who wish to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium and provide your comments. Good evening. My name is David Pierce. I live at 125 Harbor Street, which is just a, about four short blocks away from his proposed <clears throat> excuse me, project. I do not have a problem with him, uh, <coughs> all of those parcels together and opening up another convenience store. Uh, I do frequent the other store that's across the street and his prices are high. Uh, when two other stores in the area closed, uh, the prices of eggs, milk, groceries went right up. My only other alternative was I had to drive to like Wegmans or out in the suburbs, which I didn't want to do. So I am definitely in favor of this project and I have no uh, uh, problems with him uh, completing this and I, I hope you would agree with him. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Are there other individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium. Are there individuals who wish to speak in opposition to the application? If so, please come to the podium. Provide your name and address and your comments. Good evening. My name is James Daly, D-A-L-E-Y. I'm the attorney for Ms. Christine Varga, um, who is, owns several residences in the Nyer Block of Emerson Avenue, particularly 955 Emerson Avenue, which uh, butts up against the back of the proposed project site in this case. <laughs> Ms. Varga has asked me to appear on her behalf as she's traveling out of town for the holiday and just to raise a few points in opposition to the proposal. Um, the first being that um, she has expressed concerns um, about this uh, proposed store presenting a potential nuisance to the area. Um, it's my understanding and based upon some documentation that I've been supplied, including a, a police report, that uh, Mr. Uh, Mashrabash had previously owned a, a market of the same belief, uh, proposed name of Greenfoot Market on Avery Avenue. There are documented cases of um, there being issues with the sale of untaxed cigarettes and um, potentially uh, alcohol to minors. Um, Ms. Varga has asked me to express to the court, or excuse me, to the, to the panel that um, she's concerned also about the location being in such close proximity to the residence she owns as well as the neighboring residents, it appears to be that it would be a matter of feet from the back of the proposed store to those properties. And she has concerns about safety issues with regard to the potential for unsafe smoking or firing hazards that could be um, brought forth if in fact there is loitering outside of the store and uncareful smoking that could result in potential fire hazards for her tenants and other uh, residences in the area. Um, with regard to the need for another store in the area, it's my understanding and there's been some testimony that there are, uh, an, there is another store directly across the street. Um, I can't speak to exactly what uh, items they sell, but um, there is the availability of other markets in close proximity. And uh, Ms. Varga has asked me to express to the panel that um, she believes that adding an additional store to that area would change the character of the neighborhood and in fact, there being so many close residences in close proximity that um, she is concerned that there is not a need for an additional uh, store in that area and that she asked that um, the petition uh, be denied and, and that um, the site remain as it is currently zoned and opposes any uh, joinder of the two sites as well as the uh, site plan for the proposed store. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Daly, very much. Are there other individuals who wish to speak in opposition to the application? If so, please come forward. Chad Ryan, I'm a city council member here on behalf of the district. Um, so um, I'm glad Musa brought up it being a tax benefit for the neighborhood. Um, because I have an arrest record here for him being at Greenfront uh, not paying taxes on illegal cigarettes. Um, and so um, I don't know what taxes he's contributing, but he's on record uh, as not contributing to taxes and selling illegal cigarettes. 
Um, as far as the property goes, um, the I have some questions uh, about the uh, property layout. Um, the uh, property being a store is going to be cumbersome on a neighborhood, and, and I think not addressing uh, those issues like sidewalks uh, are important. Um, sidewalks uh, that are going to be used if it's a corner store and it's going to be used for food and, and a neighborhood <coughs> store needs to have sidewalks. Um, <clears throat> having uh, green infrastructure is a necessity. You know, not doing this stuff uh, is a detriment to the property. Um, not doing landscaping uh, uh, to the property is a detriment. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, there should be barrier um, along the Willis Ave entrance um, to differentiate the two properties. It's, it's sort of a strange cut there as you go in off the road. And uh, if, if it's going to be a new location, um, it, it should be uh, clearly marked it and have uh, been an addition to the neighborhood. I mean, if we're talking about it being an addition to the neighborhood, it, it should have good infrastructure, good sidewalks, and, and good green spaces. Um, I am against this project. I understand you have to look at the task at hand. Um, I think we've all belabored the issue of uh, the track record of the green front market and its, uh, you know, tremendous uh, impacts it had on the neighborhood. Um, very detrimental. Um, I would like to see the project denied. Um, if the project is not denied, uh, I think that at least um, he should do the utmost to make sure the property is uh, in good shape for the neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Just a minute, sir. Are there other individuals who wish to speak in opposition to the application? If so, please come forward. No additional speakers. Uh, sir, either one of you, if you'd like to respond to the comments made in opposition, uh, just identify yourself again because this is being recorded. Musa Shama. I'm the husband of Basma uh, Musharbash. This gentleman he just mentioned about uh, we are good about the complaining about the sidewalk. We're going to ruin the sidewalk. Right next to me is a junkyard and trucks loaded with cars on, on top, going in and out on the sidewalk all day long. How come he doesn't complain about that? And I didn't see they, they ruined the sidewalk. And we are going to ruin the sidewalk. It doesn't make any sense to me by complaining only us we are going to ruin the sidewalk with the either delivery trucks or people walking through or their cars beside right next to me they we, we, we are going to use the same driveway actually and they go in and out this junkyard with cars loaded all day long. How come he doesn't complain about it? Thank you. Thank you very much. At this point, we've heard from all the speakers, and we will now close the <coughs> hearing and move to our next hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought he was speaking for the, please, please, come right up and Joe Mastriani, engineer for the project. Uh, just to re go over some of the comments that were made, Mr. Daly says a nuisance to the area. He made the comment about uh, uh, not paying taxes on cigarettes and maybe selling uh, alcohol to minors. Well, there's no maybe if there's a lawsuit or if there's a, a ticket. I mean, he either sold alcohol and was found guilty or not. You can't say maybe. It's like maybe being pregnant. Okay, so that's not even applicable to that. The last meeting, the owner has said that they have at the other store, at the old green front and at the new one, they have off-duty policemen come in and they pay them to patrol there, to be on premises, to make sure nobody loiters, to make sure nothing's going on there, things like that. And they'd be happy to have that put into the requirement for this store as well to keep it safe. Um, under Mr. Ryan, uh, his statements, um, I'm a little confused. 
because we pointed out in the beginning, this entire area here is going to be topsoiled to get good grass growing. We're putting in arborvitaes here. We're putting in Bradford pears across the front. I mean, it's going to be landscaping done. So he's making statements that there's no landscaping being done. Maybe he didn't look at the map. I'm not sure. And the sidewalk issue, if we have to do something in regard to sidewalks, like I said, I talked to the people in the area, particularly the gentleman that owns a computer store and the people across the street, and I stated it at the beginning. When they did Willis, there was sidewalks. When they did Willis, there was a grass strip. And then the city, which is fine, they opted to then pave all the way up to the highway right-of-way line. And they got rid of the grass strip, they got rid of any sidewalk that was there. So right now, if we go to redo the sidewalks, and if we have to, we have to, we're gonna have to go through and jackhammer or dig through two to three inches of asphalt, and then the concrete of the sidewalks underneath. So, I mean, they made an impermeable barrier on top of there. Um, so there was stuff there, but now we're being told we'll take off what we did two years ago. So that's costly, and I just wanna bring that to somebody's attention. If it wasn't there, it'd be an easy thing to do. But it was almost capped with asphalt, and now we're being told, rip all that off at your cost. So that's all I had to say on that. Thank you for the additional comments uh, in response to the earlier speakers. Now we will close the hearing and move to our next application. Thank you all. <clears throat> David Pierce, 125 Emerson Ave. Uh, I know we can't do this, but I wish you folks could see the property. The Emerson Ave, where the houses, it's on a completely different grade, different driveway. There's no, nobody's gonna be going down Emerson Ave, cutting through over fences or anything to get to this. If you could see the front of the building, there's no way from anybody from Emerson Ave or the community down there to even get uh, to his uh, location. They have to walk around the block. They're on a completely different grade. So, uh, I mean, I only live a block from there. I don't see how that's gonna contribute to any traffic or people walking by or anything like that. I think we have sufficient information and I think several of the commission members have visited the site already. So I think there's some familiarity with the topography okay. in that it, it, district. Listen, this sounded like there wasn't, but there are two different streets right. that don't connect. Right. Right. Thank you. Well, appreciate that, thank you very much. And with that, we'll move to our next application. Next public hearing is SP 1822. This is a special permit for indoor amusement and recreation at 1153 to 1169 West Fayette Street. John Nowiaski is the owner and Christian Van Luden is the applicant. And this property lies within an industrial class A zoning district. Hello, John Novioski, owner of 1153 West Fayette Street. Uh, 1153 West Fayette Street is a three acre property and I have a large building uh, in which we are looking for a special permit for 1900 square feet on the second floor of this building. Uh, it's, uh, the special permit is for indoor amusement and recreation. There will be different types of events occurring there. Uh, I have with me in the audience uh, two individuals who are business partners who are going to be running those events. If you have, need any details on those events, uh, we can bring them up. Christian Van Leuven is one of the uh, owners of the uh, event facility, and he's been an owner of a local business, Rosie Tea House, for about 10 years. And Mariah Riley, she works for the health department and is also a floral designer. She's one of the business partners uh, that will be running the events. Um, so that's what we're looking for tonight is a special permit for indoor amusement and recreation. And uh, we've worked through all of the logistics as far as the safety requirements and, and such. And parking has been uh, determined as well. And the other person I'm gonna have speak tonight is Jack Phillips. He's an architectural designer. He works at CNS Engineers in Syracuse, and he's gonna be reviewing these, uh, these plans. Good evening. I am Jack Phillips. Um, I'm the project architectural designer. Um, so 
what we're doing for this event space is pretty uh, standard. Um, it's a little over 1,900 square feet. Um, so what we've done is I've done a, the appropriate study to show this routes, uh, proper distances, um, so that we're in, in the required amount for that, as well as uh, interior rooms, uh, maximum distances to find uh, that we have the appropriate amount of exits necessary for that. Um, and please interrupt me if you have any questions during the, as we go. Um, uh, we got into uh, calculating the amount of uh, occupancy for the uh, office space, or for the, excuse me, for the event center. Um, and we are, our, our number that we're reaching right now is uh, 275 occupants uh, based on the amount of square footage. Um, we've done a study to show uh, the different types of events that might ha happen in this space. Um, so we have, uh, let's see right here. Uh, uh, so this is a podium, a, a lecture configuration, which would be our uh, tightest and most dense occupancy. Um, uh, that would be uh, 180. Uh, we do have a concert venue, um, which would get us to 260, uh, but that is still below our maximum, uh, maximum occupancy. Um, and then we have uh, seated event coordination. You can think of uh, uh, wedding parties, things of that nature. Um, and then lastly, we've done a setup for a crafts fair to show how many booths would fit in this space and the occupancy required for that, which is uh, 225. Um, now we've uh, calculated out the parking based on uh, the city's uh, zoning laws for this space. Um, so I've done this as well and I've shown the other rooms that within the building. Um, this space being the first floor occupancy, this being the second, which includes that event center. Uh, in this space, this lighter area being the third. Um, now running the city's uh, uh, calculations for the amount of parking spaces needed. Uh, this is how many we total. Uh, we have, I believe, I, think, I believe it's uh, 58 additional parking spots in the event of influx and things of that nature. Um, with uh, additional ones possible, uh, we're looking into that now. But um, uh, this is uh, this is just about where we are. Uh, we've uh, gone into compliance with uh, adding some greenery space in the front and. Uh, it looks pretty good, if you ask me. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, this is this is where we are. Um, if you have any questions, so you outlined four different configurations for the space that would relate to one type of activity or another, di different type of event that would go on in there. What do you think is the most common, most typical event? Uh, Might be better if, um, yeah. You, before you relinquish this, this is a design question. Yes. Wh where on the overall building floor plan is this space? Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry. I didn't so is that so is that is that Fayette Street at the top of the building? Uh, Fayette Street would run right here. This is on the okay. second floor. Okay. But yeah, Fayette Street okay. is. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. Hi, I'm Christian Van Leuven, and uh, the name of the event space will be West Loft, and it'll be run seven days a week. We'll have uh, various businesses kind of that will be tied into this event space as well. Uh, mornings and afternoons, we have um, Dharma Yoga that'll be actually uh, running a satellite location there. And we, we presume that the, the events, concert events, will be like Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights, um, mainly two to three days a week only. So, and those will only run maybe like uh, twice a month. Um, Weddings, bridal showers will also be like another uh, facet of this space. We also have some art educational uh, pieces going into this as well too. Um, working with someone that was actually a curator at the Everson. So the idea is just to kind of bring a lot of people into the building um, and keep the space going like all day long. So Hours of operation on the weekends uh, would go to what hour? Yes, Friday and Saturday, um, 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Sunday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. So. Thank you. Other questions? Um, just a follow-up on design issues. So the, there were a number, when the owner was here last time for another tenant, um, there were a number of, um, there were a number of items that were to be incorporated into the access and egress in the parking area and I see that 
in the staff report, the city transportation planner noted that if that some of those might not have been implemented yet. One was an ADA compliant pedestrian access from the sidewalk to the front entrance of the building um, and a stop bar installed, I think in the parking lot is what he means. Um, have those been taken care of? Or have those already been installed as part of the, the I'm sorry, what was the first one? It says, Clearly defined ADA compliant pedestrian access is required from the sidewalk, I believe he means the public sidewalk, to the front entrance rather than having folks walk into the driveway. Um, and that a stop bar be installed. I'm not exactly sure where he meant that. Stop. Oh, a stop sign? Stop bar. I think it was for the cars in the parking lot. Um, Jeff, do you recall what the, where the stop bar was? Is it, is it in the drive lane? Generally, it, it's. Um, but that Neil was referring the to. Stop sign, uh, the white stripe on the pavement to be when where to stop in front of the stop sign. So that you're not stopping on the public sidewalk as you're leaving the property. Correct. I do have that. Oh, okay. That is in place. And is there a is there a sidewalk that goes from the public sidewalk on Fayette Street into your property to your front entrance? There is not. Okay. Um, I think everything else that we had talked about as part of the last request seems to have been taken care of. So it's only the sidewalk then, it sounds like. Yeah, I'm just thinking um, there would be a way to etch out a uh, access for a walkway handy, you know, like where you could wheel in from. Yeah, I seem to remember us talking about that the last time you were here. Um, I, I assume it ended up in our approval the last time. And I'm looking at what looks like a, a really old image on Google. But um, so I just, the point of asking about this is because sure. the city transportation engineer, but this body also had asked for that the last time you were here. So as we're considering another approval, it'd be good to know that the conditions we set last time were being met. Yeah, um, I can, I'll, I will do that. I have not done that. I, okay. I forgot it. I, okay, <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm set. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium to provide your comments. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. Looks like we don't have any additional speakers, so we'll close this hearing and move to our next application. The next public hearing is SP 1823. This is a special permit for a restaurant at 3408 to 3416 Burnett Avenue. NSSM Peacock LLC is the owner. Liberty Deli of Syracuse is the applicant. And this property lies within an industrial class A zoning district. Good evening. My name is William Pitcher, Pitcher Architect. Eagle Avenue, Syracuse, New York. Uh, what we're proposing is conversion of three little storefronts into a deli, and this is the old Casa di Campagna restaurant on Burnett Avenue. It's a combination of a restaurant building, small strip mall uh, stores, and two apartment buildings, two apartments within the building. Uh, in re response to the comments by the various departments you have in front of you some revised plans showing the front parking area that I think addresses most of the concerns that were raised in the comments. And I will be going down through the list that you have in front of you uh, in response to each of these things. In regards to off-street parking, uh, there are several procedural considerations regarding new parking in front of the building. Uh, as shown on sheets L1 and L2, 
the new parking requires approval as a major encroachment within the public right of way. Uh, this application has been submitted to DPW and is under review. I think it is presently being held in zoning administration until after this hearing. In discussion with zoning administration, it is our understanding that if the proposed new parking is acceptable to the commission, that you may put an approval condition on DPW's approval. Uh, and basically, if DPW doesn't approve it, then we're back here again with, with a revised submission. Uh, so that was the discussion that go forward with what we want and see whether or not DPW will confirm that. Uh, there's another existing special permit on this property, which is the old restaurant special permit, so that all the parking shown on here includes both the deli the stores, the restaurant, and the apartments. So we have those two things going. Presently, the restaurant is not operational. It's planned to go under renovations. So at this particular time, there are no parking requirements, active parking requirements for the restaurant. Um, regarding the driveway setback distances, uh, the revised site plan shows those islands and buffer islands have been added along the property west and east entrance. Uh, so that complies with that requirement. Uh, regarding the rear parking lot, there is a chain link fence and some bumpers along the east property line uh, of the rear parking lot. So I think that encroachment issue is, is addressed there. The west side doesn't have any, anything other than the edge of the asphalt, and the neighboring property is basically an overgrown field. Uh, if so required by the commission, uh, we will put bumpers or some other barrier along that edge of the property line to comply with that requirement. Um, as for the building signage, there is an existing uh, ground sign and that's in your, on your drawings at sign A. It is right in the pathway of the, the traffic. So we're proposing that sign A be rebuilt in the same size and dimensions, but to be located at the new west entrance. And that the, what we're proposing with the diagonal parking and the control signs is a one-way traffic pattern through the front of the building. Uh, so. Uh, the other signs relate to traffic control. They say exit only, entrance only, additional parking in the rear. So those, that covers all of the ground signs. The front of the building signs, uh, the wall signs are pretty much uh, under the limit, and those are shown on the elevation drawings. Uh, regarding landscaping and sidewalks, um, Basically, the comments were to, from the traffic planner, were to limit the access lane to the diagonal parking spaces to 12 feet and to increase the buffer along Burnett Street. We're proposing six inch curbing and uh, to make that separation between the existing street traffic lane and what would be the parking lot. And on L1, you can see that there's an inventory that I put together of all the various conditions uh, along Burnett Avenue. We have some gutters that appear to have been installed by the city. We have some curbs that have been installed at other locations and developments. Uh, the common denominator of all of that seems to be a single lane uh, east and a single lane west, basically a two-lane street. And that's what we're proposing, is to continue that two-lane street appearance. And that's what DPW will be looking at and deciding on. Um, we feel that the parking in front of the deli is important for its function, its business function. It's basically a takeout delivery and or delivery, but it's basically takeout. And so convenient parking at the front door uh, really is is an important thing. The 
other problem with the site is that it drops one story net to the rear parking lot. So uh, it's very difficult to get to the front of the building from the rear parking. Uh, for this reason, we're very interested in having the parking along the front of the building. Uh, we will have, with the addition of the deck, the seasonal deck in the rear, there will be an additional stairway which will go into the back door of the deli. Uh, so that is a possibility. There was some discussion about, um, from the planner, about putting along the east property line uh, another sidewalk from the rear parking lot to the front, but the, the grades are extremely street, steep, and that would basically be a series of steps that would have to be put in, and we believe that the, the stairs from the new proposed deck basically provide that function of, of getting in the back door into it so uh, we haven't proposed any new sidewalks along the east property line uh, let's see also there was the question about providing public sidewalks and we have provided the sidewalks through the island and with curb cuts and handicapped access at the ends of each of them um, there will be uh, ADA access points at the uh, sidewalk in front of the building. Uh, there was a comment also about the cars encroaching on the sidewalk and limiting the width of the pathway for ADA compliance. And as a result, I've moved the edge of the sidewalk, which is a four inch high curb, the edge of the sidewalk out two feet to act as a tire stop to preserve the required distance. So that's why you see the, the concrete appearing underneath the parking spaces. That's basically where the tires of the cars will hit. Um, on the arterial setback distance, um, that basically uh, is an issue. We, we ask for a waiver on that. Uh, on the number of parking spaces, we're also short. We ask for a waiver on that. Uh, Engineering uh, comments were that a SWIP uh, might be necessary if we disturb more than 10,000 square feet. The actual area of the island is approximately 2,500 square feet, so I don't think we're going to be into that level, and we're not proposing. Uh, the rest of the parking area is existing asphalt, so we're not disturbing the existing asphalt. So I don't believe that we'll need a study on that. Uh, as far as their comment on the stormwater runoff, the site actually uh, drains to the rear parking lot. Uh, so there's no, no existing or pr proposed future runoff towards the street or towards adjacent properties. It basically all runs down the west driveway into the rear parking lot. At the end of the rear parking lot is basically un scrub land with brush and grass where all of the rainwater basically is absorbed into the ground at that point. Um, there's no evidence of gullies or erosion in that area, so apparently uh, the area is sufficient to absorb the runoff. Uh, regarding the county's one-to-one -one offset plan uh, for the sewage, uh, basically we are, are increasing the permeable area of the site with this front planting. We're making more area where water can be absorbed on the site. Uh, regarding the planning board, Onondaga County Planning Board, um, they noted the existing uh, patio area and the existing seating area as to remain uh, on our drawings. We have it to be removed. Uh, they also commented on um, the front parking area and we've modified that. Uh, regarding sanitary sewer flows, since the restaurant is not operational at this point, we don't believe that the deli will increase the sewage uh, discharge beyond what the restaurant had and when we come back to with the restaurant renovations we will address that issue. Uh, regarding uh, 
the 2,000 foot limit uh, from uh, DES remediation recites, those are basically downhill from the site uh, near 690 and, and 481. Uh, so they're not, not on this site. And regarding the uh, long-eared bat habitat, uh, we're not proposing any changes to any of the, the brush and scrub on the side of, on the south side of the parking lot. Uh, if you have any questions, Say again what waivers you are asking for. We're asking for a waiver for the parking. Um, we are we are asking for permission to be in the right of way. Um, I guess that is a is a that's a DPW decision, but I, it's also uh, I think from your point of view, it's an appearance decision. It's a neighborhood appearance decision. Opposite side of the street is all residential. And right now they're looking at Burnett Avenue and then they're looking at another, and the asphalt pavement extending another 40 feet. So as far as the island's concerned, I think we're, we're looking for your permission um, to proceed with, with that kind of planting. Uh, there, the, the, Onondaga County notes that in the revised zoning of rezone Syracuse, there is no planning buffer required at the front property line. So I guess at this point in time, I'm asking for a waiver of that requirement, which would be where the parking spaces are, to waive the requirement of the buffer on the property in lieu of having it at the street line with the new island. So I'm asking for that waiver. Um, we're asking for a waiver on the ground signage because the existing ground sign is greater than permitted. Uh, we're okay on wall signs. Um, other than that, Those are really the main waivers. Okay. Um, can I ask a question since you just gave us yeah. new plans yeah. uh, right now? So on the um, L2 sheet, which seems to be uh, indicating the whole entire property, yes. you've got off-street parking and you label certain areas with letters of the alphabet. Um, can you indicate where is G? Because I can't find G on this. Let's see. You have 17 a, spots in area G. At this point in time, I can't. Okay, so we'll have to we'll take we'll away 130 17 from 132. Yes. So there's more of a parking waiver there. But it looks like you also added one in the front, number 12, it's not labeled? Is, uh, is That is the handicapped access lane. It's not a parking lane. Okay, so that should be indicated on Yeah, on that's here. indicated on L. Um, the loading area. Not on L2, though. No. L1. Or L1. Lab not the new ones, you guys. Yeah, you should hatch it. Yeah. You can hatch it. And then also... Um, it looks like you accommodated pedestrian access in revision number one uh, with the triangle, um, mm -hmm. probably addressing the transportation planner's concerns for, for pedestrians to safely walk through. How did you accommodate the same amount of parking spaces? Did you reduce the drive aisles, or how, how did the same amount of parking spaces fit now with essentially one gone per width? Uh, it was always 11 spaces in one loading area. No, I'm talking in the back. So your oh, your C, D, and E? 
you lo it looks oh. like you have a pedestrian access yeah. on on l2 if you look at the center of the parking lot that little bump out is the rear entrance to the old restaurant and he said he wanted some kind of centrally delimited uh, pedestrian pathway so basically i just picked up those parking spaces and moved them over one parking space and we'll stripe the, okay. the driveway to show the pedestrian pathway as so, a no parking area. Did you shift them to the to the east? East. Okay. So my only concern would be the people in area F backing up. Is there enough drive aisle there because you moved yeah. it on yeah, one we've way? We've got twenty five feet for okay. coming out. Okay. And then I just wanted to clarify the encroachment. Um, it's the Common Council's decision. Um, the, that gets sent around to all different departments. We are one department that will comment on it. And in this instance, because the commission is reviewing this proposal, um, we will act on your behalf and make whatever comments you would make about any encroachments on the property. Oh, and also. Uh, you didn't identify hours of operation in uh, the. Uh, I will. Okay. The owner will talk to you about operation. Uh, can I, before we move to the, yeah. that issue, sticking with design issues for a moment, if the larger restaurant is not operating right now, do we need to take into consideration that there is, it's a, it's in vacant, it's an unused commercial space and therefore there are no parking requirements for it in which case this application would not need a waiver but when the new restaurant goes in that space it might need a waiver well the question remains if a new restaurant comes in they can utilize that existing special permit ah, for that got it restaurant okay so because it runs with the land um, you know this is this is an additional special permit for this specific right. space to be taken in consideration as a whole. So unless the owner of the property uh, requested to rescind that special permit, then we, we would say at this time the requirement for vacant space is nothing. However, unless they demolish that, the, and it is still a restaurant the the requirement would be would be the same but so you can take into consideration um, you know any or all of those factors um, similar just related design question because in terms of the parking in front of the building and the encroachment in the right-of-way as drawn, the spaces are on the private parcel, but it's backing into the right of way to actually exit. That's the issue. Yes, and well, the, uh, the special permit in 1999, it was shown those parking spaces and the commission at that time refused because they had to back into the right of way to turn around. So those spaces were taken off of the, the special permit for the restaurant. So basically what's there has been quote illegal for however long so that's the issue before DPW and the council specifically is whether from their perspective whether or not to allow the encroachment for exiting these diagonal spaces well I think it's the physical improvements that are buffering the backing out is the encroachment the, the physical improvements that are being proposed on this new plan that looks like a big island Yes. Um, and it, it's not labeled, but it, not on this one. Um, this one it is. So I think there's new parking buffer, six, six foot by four foot granite curbs, uh, planted lawn, um, trees. So six. Uh, a sign. Well, the sign can't be in the right of way, so that might need to um, come out. Uh, 11. Sorry, just received these, so I'm looking. Um, so, so the physical improvements are what is in the right of way. Now, if the transportation planner is saying it's not safe to back out into the right of way and this helps mitigate that, then that, that's uh, 
something that mm -hmm. they will look at. Again, all di many different departments look at the encroachment, right. not just not just ours. So it's not just that they're backing out in the right of way, but to to get permission to do that and make it safe. These folks are proposing this island. So that complicates now what the request is. Can we back out into the right of way and can we build this island? Right at, right at the moment, there is no division between right. the road and the Yeah, I'm house. looking at that. And so again, it, it's, it's both issues that are being requested then at that point. Um, if this were all denied, have you considered just five parallel spaces along the front of the building that would service the deli? It's a possible option. We would have to come back. If it's denied, we have to do a whole new application. It's just that it might give you the yeah. sort of pickup spaces that you need yeah. and maybe not have to do all this other stuff. Okay, uh, one other question. Um, I was confused about what you just said a few minutes ago about the sign. So there's the existing ground sign. Yes, if you look on L1. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, right uh, sort of in the center of the parking lot where the bump is, that right. note number one mm -hmm. is the existing sign. Mm -hmm. If you look to the right, sign A, uh, the dotted, that is the existing sign, and what we're proposing is the, the sign A, which is going to be number six at the west entrance. So we're proposing to build a new sign of the same size and dimensions, but moving it out of the traffic pathway in the right of way right. so you need approval for that as well yes so there would not be two large ground signs there would only be one, one. so and if it's denied then probably the existing sign will remain where it is within the right of way okay. assuming that was a previously approved encroachment anyway well I don't know about encroachment it was previous it was noted on the previous 1999 special permit for the restaurant as being a sign under the special permit yeah. so it's still that still would have needed an yeah. approval by the common council so in the staff report mm -hmm. on page not numbered for me uh, page, oh, no. Page, no, I can't. Page two um, of the staff report, number 19, which says the proposal is allowed one wall sign and one ground, and the applicant is proposing to install two ground signs. That's not the case anymore, then. Yes, that is the case. It still if, is the case. If you look on sheet L1, unless it's been revised, um, the illustration. <coughs> Excuse me. Illustration five um, Traffic is for two ground signs that uh, reference the restaurant. Okay. So because it's referencing the restaurant, We're, you're on uh, sheet L one. Got it. Illustration five. Oh, sign B. Yeah. Traffic. Oh, because it has the name of the restaurant on yes. it. It's not just a directional sign at that point. Correct. Ah, I couldn't find that one before. So thank you. Okay. I it is either so the smaller sign forget the smaller sign. The other sign is that forty square feet or is that does that require if we forgot about the small one for a moment, if they simply took the name of the restaurant off it, I assume that would be okay. But the larger sign being proposed, does it meet the size requirements? It needs a waiver. It's larger. It's larger. Two sided. Oh, because it's two sided. Oh, okay. And 40 is what's allowed. If you look at the sign table on item 22 of your staff report, yep. the uh, sign A. Mm -hmm. The, the, the large tenant ground sign, uh, the panel for the restaurant required the waiver. 
This is the one that says 34.8 feet per square, yeah. square feet per side. Okay. And since we're doubling it, okay. It requires a waiver for the number of signs and the addition. Because that would be, again, there are uh, two ground signs for the restaurant. Because this directional one actually has yeah. the name of the restaurant. If it didn't, it wouldn't be considered. If it didn't have right. the name it's, of the restaurant. It's, it's, it's advertising the use. Yeah. But right. if it was a directional, it can be no larger than nine square feet. Got it. Okay. And this is 10. We will stipulate taking the name off because it's basically saying additional parking in the rear and a waiver for the area. Okay. Just questions at this point. You still have another part of your presentation, correct? Yes. The design issues unresolved at the moment. Then let's move to the other part of the presentation, if you will, please. Good evening. My name is Diane Pownowski, and I'm owner of Liberty Deli, and as well partner of NSSM Peacock LLC. So our proposal is to hurry up and bring back Liberty Deli, which was originally located at 323 Irving Ave. I know. <laughs> so we're anxious to do that. And with that said, we want to take three of those units and make it into the deli. And our hours of operation are proposed to be uh, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the evening, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays 9 to 3, and closed on Sundays. Uh, we're looking at maintaining the same level of service and food uh, varieties as we have in the past, which are fresh cut meats, uh, sandwiches made to order, uh, hot grilled foods, uh, entrees, uh, either eat in or take out, um, in addition to our homemade sweets and uh, the beverage lineup and little snacky foods. So we're hoping to uh, add build up to eight employees in the beginning, and hopefully we can add more based on customer traffic. So if there are any other questions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? Please come forward, sir, and provide your name, address, and your comments. Good evening. My name is uh, Steven Panofsky. I live at 114 Longwood Drive. I'm the son of Diane Panofsky, and I am in favor because those sandwiches are freaking awesome. <laughs> that is all. It will not only benefit Burnett Ave, but all of central New York. We, we can quote you on the quality of the sandwiches. Right? <laughs> Other individuals who might want to speak in favor of this application, please come to the podium. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to the application? No additional speakers. We'll declare the hearing closed. Thank you all very much, and we'll move to our next hearing. The next public hearing is a resubdivision. It has a companion piece, a new business companion piece. So in your agendas the companion piece is new business item number one um, so this resubdivision is r1846 and this is to divide one property into two new lots this is the loretto housing development fund c incorporated that's the owner and applicant it's at 312 fillmore avenue and this is a planned um, institutional district so it's one of our pids the companion piece, the reason they're doing the REIT subdivision, is Z2805. This is a project plan review to um, make some uh, exterior alterations uh, on the building and the site. Also at 312 Fillmore Avenue, Loretto Housing Development Fund Company Incorporated is the owner and applicant. Again, it's a planned institutional district. So um, the new business item, uh, under the rules and regulations for an institutional districts, um, 
this is a new business item because it doesn't require any waivers or adjustments to the the district plan and again it's a presentation we'll hear all this concurrently and act uh, separately Good evening, uh, Bruce King, Holmes King, Colquist and Associates Architects. Uh, I also have uh, Joanne Galliano and Sarah Hogan from EDR here. Uh, they'll be handling the site side of the presentation. Um, and we also have a couple of folks from Loretto who can answer questions should they be needed. So this project involves the uh, Pius X building, which is this bar. Uh, attached to the star-shaped building. Uh, here's the uh, here's the Fay building down here, just for orientation. Interstate 81. Uh, the original project was built in 1955. Uh, it was built as an apartment residence for clergy, and had 41 units. We're proposing to redevelop it as senior housing with a component uh, for. Uh, uh, less less well but not nursing care seniors um, in the process we'll reduce the unit count from 41 to 35 uh, they'll all be one bedroom units I can kind of run through the plan the uh, current site development includes 40 parking spaces uh, the proposed site development that EDR will review with you reduces that count to 32 so the overall use intensity is going down with the alterations. The proposal basically creates apartments. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, creates apartments on all levels on the first floor, which is currently visually, I guess you'd say, the basement. It's the current entrance actually it comes in up here next to the Heritage Building. The new entrance will come in from the lower level uh, and there, so there's a entry vestibule and office and then as we move up uh, apartments on the first current first second and third floors uh, the entrance as I say used to come in at this position that's going to be eliminated uh, the connection to the heritage building which was originally a party wall is going to be restored to a party wall uh, so that they become again separate structures uh, there'll be a community room on this floor and then otherwise it's a series of one bedroom apartments this is a New York State housing and community renewal funded project so it's operating in the affordable seniors range in terms of unit size and so forth um, interiors all new construction exterior basically won't change much in appearance I'll skip over the intermediate floor plans unless anybody has questions. Um, this is the view from the lower level. This block currently is solid masonry. We'll be adding windows to that block. Uh, these bays are a series of garage bays which will be enclosed and become apartment units. Uh, this area in front, as Sarah will show you, was, is all parking up against the building that will be reworked to introduce some green space adjacent to the building. Otherwise, exterior work is masonry restoration, window replacement, uh, the, the normal renewal that you'd expect on a 1955 building that was quite well built to begin with, but is showing, showing a bit of age in a few places. Uh, with that, I'll turn this over to EDR. If we flip the board around, your site's all on the back. Okay, that's I'll fine. Use, I think I'll use both. Okay. Good evening. My name is Sarah Hogan, and I'm from EDR. I'm one of the project managers for this project. Um, so tonight we are here to request um, subdivision approval for this project. Um, as you can see, um, the parent parcel is about 13 acres, and we're requesting to subdivide into about a one and a half acre parcel. Um, which is the red line that you see right here, the proposed subdivision line. 
all of our development minus um, a few of the pedestrian pathways um, is within this development or within the subdivision line. Um, we do have a few easements that we've been working with the city of Syracuse on. Um, water access easement, uh, water easement um, for our domestic and fire to uh, the project site. Uh, we are also showing a um, 20 foot sanitary sewer easement along the backside of the parcel and connecting down um, towards Springbrook. Um, the site plan, let's see if I can flip through. There's my hand. Oh, oh shoot. Do you have the, you have the rendering one, don't you? Uh, the site rendering? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, I can take this one down. Okay. It is uh, right now with the subdivision line here. Yeah. There we go. Um, so to follow up on what Bruce mentioned with the development, uh, you can see we are proposing an asphalt parking lot um, to accommodate some of the parking for the building. And we are proposing a new access entrance um, to this specific parcel. Um, we have shown some land bank parking. Um, in the pedestrian pathways, we're maintaining the 10 foot wide um, asphalt pathways. They could be reduced. Um, and then we are proposing some crosswalk connections up here to where Loretto would like to relocate one of the bus stops um, that's currently on site to be more accessible to um, the parcel over here to the south. Uh, we do have some concrete sidewalks, um, some general landscaping to provide um, for aesthetic reasons. We also have uh, green space here that we've programmed for the residents. Um, also trying to keep the parking away from the units, um, so there's no headlights going directly into the units. Um, our stormwater management area is over here. We roughly have about a little over 11,000 square feet of increased impervious area, um, given the proposed improvements, and that's inclusive of the asphalt pathways and concrete sidewalks. Um, our intention is to capture retain and let it infiltrate um, in this area. We also are showing um, for the balance of earthwork, I'm uh, gonna use some on-site berming over here and propose um, some vegetation, both evergreen and deciduous, uh, to kind of give this particular parcel its own feel. And with that, I will open it to any questions. Thank you. Do we have questions? No. No. Okay. Thank you all very much. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come forward. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to the application? If so, please come to the podium. Kathy Strivel, uh, 316 Monticello Drive North. Um, I'll just pass out my comments here. First of all, I want to say I'm not opposed to the renovation of the Pius 10th building, and I'm not opposed to um, the senior housing there either. Um, I live downhill of this complex, and for the last 35 years, I've dealt with developments on this plateau. Um, I'm opposed to sectioning off a section of the site for incremental review when we have this uh, very large development 
um, which I have in the aerial photo, I wasn't able to annotate the entire development. Um, I think it's a bad precedent. All the sanitary and stormwater lines from this building go down East Glen Avenue, and um, so they all come down <clears throat> through. Um, it's actually um, an environmentally sensitive wetland. Comes down East Glen Avenue, and there's an eight-inch sewer line clay pipe built in. I think it was 1926, somewhere around there which has overflowed in the past due to Loretto Geriatric Center, Cunningham Building, and Fahey Building um, discharges. In 1991, after they approved the Fahey Building, which was a, another 200-bed unit from the 520-bed unit, um, they required Loretto to put in a grinder to grind all the stuff coming out of the Cunningham building into smaller pieces so it would go down the eight inch line. And also to put in a um, grease degreaser from the uh, facility because it was creating so much grease. Now that's the main building. I understand that's not what's proposed here. I'm just illustrating the kind of things that have happened um, to the neighborhood as a result of what's gone on there. Um, I'm requesting that, I know you have this on your agenda as a new business, but I'm requesting the commission to consider a public hearing for the site plan. Um, I'm gonna go over some other factors right now, but uh, I believe there really should be a public hearing on every single site plan on this site. We've always had um, public hearings on the site plans for the site. Um, Okay, since the Fahey building, 200 beds, and a, the large southern parking lot, 177 spaces with little detention on the south edge of the site, and the parking lot to the north side of Fahey in 1989-90, uh, Loretto has proposed a mid-size, a mid-rise building, 51 units, that was in 1994. That was uh, pull back for some reason or another. I think it might have been because of what we submitted to the state about this site. Um, in, 19, in 2004, an overflow gravel lot was expanded to 130 spaces. It was paved and lighted. And that space had extensive review and had a lot of, has a lot of underground detention. It has some surface detention and overflow and some other things there. So it's quite a bit of um, surface detention and then also um, underground in that lot. In 2009, another 60 space parking lot was proposed, but that one has not been constructed. It's unclear to me if that one is still on the agenda or not. Um, I have a picture of that one if you'd like to see that one. Um, it seems to be precluded by this development, but I'm not sure. Um, also, in, I want to point out, in, in, um, on this site, there's only one entry to the site. It's off of Brighton Avenue. Um, there's only one water line. It's off of Brighton Avenue. And in 2004, they, there was an exploration of whether or not they should build another water line from Seneca Turnpike. And we had meetings on it. And for some reason, I think they decided Seneca Turnpike line could not supply the Loretto site. So there's only one water line. There's one emergency entry in and out of the site. So I just wanted you to consider all that. That's the reason why I don't think we should start subdividing out this here and this there, because there's other parts of the site that could still be developed. And we've got an overall impact here. It's a, there are two PIDs serviced by one road and one water line. Um, so in all of these projects, we're at about 100% impervious expanse in the s south PID. And this one's 
increasing, in spite of what um, the architect said, I believe they're increasing the impervious area on the north PID. Um, okay. Um, from what I could understand, and this was from articles in the in the paper, the original or the existing building had 22 rooms in it. That's what they said. Now they might have had more than one person in a room. It was a the priest the priest home. Um, so they're saying they're reducing the number of a population. I don't know that. I don't know what the original population was. I don't know what the original sewage load was on that building. Um, there's paving here. I don't think they're reducing the paving. I think they're expanding the paving, and they have um, what they call land bank spaces to the south east of the lot, which I don't understand what land bank spaces are. But one thing I said today to Jeff, Loretto never has enough parking. They will come back for more parking, I predict, within five years. Um, so those spaces will become parking spaces. Um, and that's just our experience. The parking lot proposals come every five years. Uh, we actually encourage them at one point to take some things off campus to reduce the load on the site, and I think they did, but they still have a parking problem. So I don't know if this is a reduction or an increase um, from what's there. Again, that's for you to determine. Um, this is a karst limestone plateau. Um, underneath it, it's fractured limestone. Belief beneath the Fahey residence, the bedrock when they when they went to bore down was about four feet down. It's very close to the surface. I don't know what it is over where they're proposing their detention, but if you put water on top of karst limestone, fractured limestone, it just goes down to the neighborhood. That's where it goes. So up in this parking lot here where they built some underground detention, and then they say some of it is supposed to absorb into the site, it goes right down to Springbrook, and we've had a lot more water coming over Springbrook since 2004. I don't know what it's due to. I mean, they would have to do tracers. There's no way to tell how this water, we have a lot of underground water. It's coming down the valley. It's a valley, I know that. But Loretto's contributing to it. If they put um, detention here on the surface and they don't um, put any restriction in it, it will just go right down to the valley. That's where it's going. And I've said this over and over. I've been before you on other projects, say the same thing over and over again. So I'm just saying it again. Um, that's where it's going to go. Um, there's ways, there's, it's probably better actually to discharge it directly to the line that goes down Glen Avenue, which is quite large. This is quite large storm sewer than it is to try to retain it on the top of the site. It's not being retained up there. It's just coming right down to the streets below and the residents below. Um, so um, just to reiterate what we said before, there's no room for snow, snow storage on the site. At times when they have a lot of snow, they have to truck the snow from the south end of the site up to the north end of the site. There's no snow storage around this lot. They're pushing the fence down toward the slope here. They have destroyed all the vegetation which was originally put in to buffer this lot on the south. Um, if they put these um, land bank spaces in, they won't have any snow storage space. There's maybe a little space there. I, they didn't address that, so I don't know. But that. It's a chronic problem if you, if you go up there um, during the big snows. It's a huge, huge chronic problem. I think I've mentioned um, everything except noise, and I just mentioned this again, although the commission has, I think, repeatedly disregarded it. When all this 
paving and building has gone on up here. We have I-81 here. The noise reverberates off the parking lots, the buildings, and boomerangs down into the valley. Um, I won't mention large equipment on the Loretto Cunningham building, which throbs. I'm not sure what it is, if it's an emergency system, but we can hear the vibrations and the sound down the valley from this equipment all the time. And it, more paving only makes it worse. But I, you know, I'm, I know there's paving here. This isn't that much more than what's there. But I just want to bring it up that it's a, a problem impact on the neighborhood, which um, in none of the previous times we've been before you it has made much of an impact, I don't think. So I, in summary, I just I raised concerns about subdividing off portion of this PID and looking at it as one little tiny thing in the midst of this large system, which all connects to this line. It goes down Glen Avenue. So in the past, this has led to serious problems, and I, I understand and I've witnessed the changing nature of senior care institutions. I know very closely, I know what that's about. Studied that, spent a lot of time on that. But I don't think the city should facilitate avoidance of public review. And I'm requesting a public re review of the site plan, um, unless you plan on doing that right now. And I oppose subdivision without strong reasons for this action. And that's mainly to consider the impacts of all this development together. And again, I don't, I don't oppose this building being renovated. I think it's a good idea. I mean, it's been there. It's a, it's a part of the site. Um, I think the population was much reduced over the last few decades. So I really, like I said, I don't know what the population was originally. Thank you. Are there other individuals who wish to speak in opposition to the application? Come forward, please. Just provide your name and address and use the microphone to uh, offer your comments. Good evening. My name is John Camerata. I am the nearest neighbor next door neighbor to the Loretto facility at the south end of the campus, the half the south. My property runs contiguous with Loretto for about a block uh, at the uh, west, uh, southwest uh, portion of the property. Uh, I've resided in the area in that location for over 50 years. And over the course of, of the time, the, the property was initially owned by the Diocese of Syracuse, which constructed the large a 13-story Cunningham building. That was the first project in 1973. Be prior to that, there was the Bernadine project, but that was more uh, uh, closer to the Valley Plaza. So that, technically, the uh, Bernadine apartments, that's a 23, I think, a 23-story building. It's an independent living combination of assisted living. That was the first project. Then the Cunningham building behind me. And it's been a nightmare on the, as the, was described, there is a plateau. And those of us who are downhill, including all the neighbor, the adjoining properties on Springbrook, which on the map they run along at the west of the property, which, be, which would be this area along here. There's a downhill neighborhood. You can't see it and you don't notice it if you drive up to Loretto. But all these properties from, from Fillmore South to Seneca Turnpike, along Monticello, they're all impacted by whatever Loretto does. Drainage issues, water in the basements, water, there's so much uh, water that is seeping out now, it covers the streets, ice forms in the winter. So uh, I am not opposed to the use of the housing as, a, as an apartment complex. I think it's very noble, it's a good use. The problem is that if there's no review, which has occurred in the past, uh, then we don't know where, for instance, the outletting of the sewage and the uh, storm runoff will go. Uh, when the 
Pius X was constructed and the adjoining Loretto Rest building, which is now the Heritage Apartments, that was constructed in 1926, they all drain into the uh, sewage system on Fillmore. And if you drive up Fillmore, it's an incredible slope, a steep slope, that hill. And those lines, water that is not metered and controlled, sewage, water, whatever, comes running down those lines. It's a combination storm system built in the 20s, only an eight inch circumferent line, clay uh, tile. Those, the water just breaches, comes through the catch basins, flows out. We had a 100 year storm in the 90s. It was just incredible. So to my knowledge, that's still the same and those neighbors have to contend with those issues with water backing up into their basements and that sort of thing. In the 90s, there was a serious problem where well, those of us on Glen Avenue had, uh, uh, there was a, uh, a clogging of the system, the storm source, excuse me, the sanitary system, literally uh, gowns, uh, gloves, sheets, towels were coming down the system, clogging the system on East Glen Avenue. Uh, the storm sewer system, another eight inch clay line that was built in the 20s. These lines never were built to accommodate this kind of impact, this large uh, system, this large complex. In, uh, as was mentioned, in around 1994-95, there was a 65 unit apartment building for seniors proposed for the middle of the site, ne right next to the, uh, directly east of the uh, Loretta Rest and the Pius X home. It's in a big open area. If you drive up there, you make a left off the bridge from uh, uh, Brighton Avenue, you'll see a beautiful big green space. They had proposed this large facility for that area, which would have taken all the green space that existed. And uh, uh, it, to, to make a long story short, it was denied by the city. The mayor came up and walked the site city people came and checked everything out. The answer was no, and that Loretto wanted the city to pay for the cost of upgrading our system, our uh, sanitary system, and if necessary, the uh, storm sewer system. Loretto didn't want to pay for the cost. The city said no, and if it was to be a yes, they would, Loretto would have to uh, bear the cost themselves. So the project was scrapped, but fortunately they found an alter, uh, alternate alternative location in North Syracuse, so the project was safe, which was beneficial in that respect. My point being that there seems to be a saturation point and a point now that it's reaching maximum capacity, and there has to be a review. My question is, are they going to move lines now, outlet sewage and stormwater, all the way on Glen? Uh, there is the, the overflow parking lot, which is described, part of that water, I think, if not all is metered down into the Glen Avenue line, storm sewer line. And of course, this new proposal, this project should also bear, uh, for perhaps be treated in the same way. There should be some kind of control as to the volume being released from the system. And there should probably be imper uh, pervious rather, rather than impervious, pervious, uh, a few pervious spaces. Uh, a setup where it could collect some of the water, then meter also that out down through the system. As to the bedrock issue, there is so much rock there that in the past they had to use dynamite. And we had damage in our residence way back when the uh, Cunningham building was erected. They could feel the impact from the explosives all the way down to Midland Avenue. So since then, we've always requested that no explosive be used to excavate that stone. And the city has been very good in that re respect, requiring that they use a mechanical means, which they have. I do not know if, I don't see much in the application. I don't know if the boring studies have been done or what else, but there needs to be a good review so that those of us who live downhill are not impacted adversely, most of whom, a lot of our elderly, they could not, most people cannot afford to mitigate the costs of damage themselves. And it would also be good if someone would require Loretto to purchase a bond or a trip so that if there is damage, that people are protected. I have one other concern, which is the snow storage. By eliminating all this green space, as was mentioned, 
in the past, particularly in the 90s, there were huge snowfalls. Loretto was prohibited from pushing snow over the parking lots to the downhill areas. No one has watched that over the years. They keep doing that. Fences have come down the south parking lot. All the vegetation that was put to provide screening is pretty much uh, degraded. And uh, it would be useful uh, to require them to maintain some green space so that they can have a storage area in the event of, uh, of major snow. Because once you start using the area as parking lots and you have all cars, it's very little uh, thought given to snow storage. And there's no place to put it. You have to put it in existing parking spaces. And at that facility, most of the employees will not walk to the north, the open north parking lot. They're afraid because of the crime, especially at night. So everyone wants to be close to the building, which I understand, and I agree. If I were there at night, I would also want to be close to uh, to the building. So again, there must be some accommodation made for snow storage. I won't reiterate what has been said, but I do wish that you would uh, provide a public review. That way, if any other issues come forward, we can bring it up and that information be made available to us as to some of the questions that we've had tonight. Thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Thank you for your comments. Are there other individuals who would like to speak in opposition? Please come forward. Your name and address for the record and then your uh, remarks. It's Anita Stearns. I live at 411 East Glen Ave, directly below the gazebo. <laughs> and I am right next to the culvert that is uh, mitigating three uh, freshwater uh, streams that are uh, springs spring fed out of the limestone that are DEC, I was told DEC uh, protected. I'm not supposed to do anything to them. That's a concern because when I looked at the map on the final page and I didn't realize there was the other maps, I'm, I'm very, I'm not up to speed like these lady, this lady was. I'm sorry, I didn't even bring any comments that I could bring to you. These comments are fine. Okay, um, this new easement that they're pro projecting even though they say that there's less people going to the projected number of units in the building that they're renovating is going to be 35 down from 41 units there's some reason they're showing a huge proposed 20-foot sanitary sewer easement uh, I can show you on this enlargement it's right above my home and I know that the sewer line is right going diagonally where people go up to work actually to Loretto's buildings across my property and up through the woods every day. So I don't understand if they need this sewer easement and it's, it's joining the existing old clay line that's never been redone and infrastructure has never been rebuilt that I know of. Does that mean that they're going to actually bring bulldozers in there and start redoing lines or putting lines in? If that's the case, that's gonna be a big problem because supposedly there's protected, the waters are protected and the, there's some kind of species, I don't know, two bats or something. There's a forest there, it's a woodland. So I'm kind of concerned because I didn't get this announcement till about five days ago in the mail. I wasn't prepared, so I, I was just looking at the map today and actually making sure I understood what was new. What was new was proposed 20, 20 foot sanitary sewer that's gonna line up to this other sewer. So I don't know why they would need that if they are actually decreasing the number of human beings that are producing, you know, wash, washing their clothes and so on. So I'd like the clarification on that because there's gonna be bulldozers up there. There's gonna be a big problem. It's already a problem anyways, but I have a lot of runoff in my stream and I'd like to actually address that a separate time as far as why there's an artificial stream in my, my property created by the previous owner. And it's, it's actually um, uh, damaging my property but because of the uh, limestone underlying, soft, soft, um, if, if it's not a natural bed, it will find its own way over time downhill and I am on a hill. So now I have 
leaching all over my property. Not that's a different subject, but I can see where other people who live just below, like I do, right in this very steep hill, anything coming over, whether it's the snowpack melting or this new uh, lagoon that they're proposing to capture drainage or water drainage. I don't know. Uh, to me, it's nerve-wracking, and I don't want to have it approved until everything is addressed, and I'm very nervous because I live right below them. Sorry I'm not more prepared. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Are there other individuals who would like to speak in opposition to the application? If so, please come forward to the podium. Looks like that is the extent of the speakers for this evening, so I turn back to the applicant team. Um, would you like to you have the opportunity to address some of the comments made in opposition? Yeah, perhaps I can just clarify a couple of things. Uh, the reason for the resubdivision is funding sources. Uh, because it's uh, New York State Homes and Community Renewal, they require a mortgage on the property. And uh, that's, that's the logic behind it. Um, in the process of doing the project, one of the things that we're attempting to do is restore the separation of this building from the Heritage Building. Uh, currently, most utilities run through the Heritage Building, and that's the reason for some of the utility construction, is to get this building on its own services, uh, to correct some of the issues that occur when you have one building serve off another building. Um, to clarify, the density question again. Uh, the building was originally designed with 41 units. Uh, we have the original drawings. We, we know what the original design was. And as I say, it will go down to 35. Uh, we know the parking will go from 40 down to 32. Uh, as Sarah mentioned, there is a slight increase in the impervious area. That's to provide something that doesn't exist now, and that is the ability for fire vehicles to turn around. Uh, right now, there is not a code compliant turnaround in the parking area. They have to back out, and uh, current codes don't allow them to back that far. So part of the issue in rearranging the parking is to create a loop drive that allows a fire truck to come in and come back out. Uh, we looked at a T-turn. We looked at other ways to minimize it. I think the loop really came out the most economical in terms of paved area. And, you know, the last piece to, you know, to the snow storage issue, you know, this site is in the middle of a lawn with graded areas that allow snow to be pushed without being a detriment to landscaping or any other properties and without reducing the parking area. Um, the reason for land banking some of the parking is, as you've seen before with senior housing, rarely does a senior project utilize all of the parking that city zoning would require. But we do have the land to build it. Should tenants need it, it can be added. And that's the point of land banking. But we don't see any reason knowing the track record of elderly housing and, and you know, our firm is done 20 some projects in this range and it's very rare if we approach uh, even 60% of the residents having cars. Uh, so that's the logic for land banking parking rather than building it now. Um, there is no new construction as far as building is concerned. Uh, there's no, you know, we're not expanding the footprint so there should be no significant uh, construction issues in terms of uh, foundation excavation and similar things. Um, anything you want want to add on the utilities, sir? Or well, before you all switch, um, so there are 41 units. We're going to 35. Yep. Is the building currently occupied? And if not, when was it last occupied? Uh, it is not currently occupied. Uh, it's occupied within the last five years. Yeah. So if there were, if there were a number of So one of the concerns that's been mentioned is whether or not the sanitary, current sanitary system can maintain, can sustain whatever the load has been or will be. So a five-year difference 
but not knowing how many residents were there at the time, is that something you investigated in terms of the current sanitary system? And then can you speak specifically to the easement that you're requiring and what's going to be involved with that specific, specific aspect of the project? Um, so to go back to the easement question, we'll start there. Thanks, Bruce. Um, it is a 20-foot wide sanitary ease, sewer easement. We did explore several options. Oh, sure. Um, we did explore several options um, to look at potential pumping over to Fillmore as an option. Um, this, in working with the city, uh, seem to be the most uh, applicable um, solution for Loretto to gravity. There is an existing sewer from the Fahey residence that's gravitied. The reason why it is 20 foot is just a standard easement width for a sanitary, and it has a separation off the other existing sanitary um, that's running down the hill and connecting into East Glen. Um, we so, so you're not tying into that, you're just laying a parallel line? We're paralleling. Um, we did actually explore um, and showed in one option pre in preliminary design, schematic level, that to connect into this manhole um, and then have the potential for the city to take dedication up to. Um, but we, they didn't like that idea and they had advised to parallel and connect into East Glen for sewer. So this is, all gonna, this is all new construction of this line that we're talking about? Correct. And, and so in terms of, the, I think the gentleman spoke about whether or not the sanitary system that exists, you're not tying into an existing line, but you are making a connection down here. Correct, we're just running parallel with the line that's coming from the Fahey residents. What's the existing slope right there? I don't know that off the top of my head. I know it's significantly steep. We've run some preliminary profiles in here um, to look at the sanitary and the depth, and, and it is, it's deep. Um, so not a question for you, but a question for staff. Where, where is Seeker in all this? Because I was looking, I didn't see it under the new business item. Um, you fill out Seeker. We've submitted a, a short form with the subdivision application. So, so all of this. So all of. So in terms of the construction of this in your Seeker, you've looked at the impact of the construction in terms of erosion, and uh, water runoff. So that's all, and it's all done in a short form. Yep. So you're anticipating no impact from doing that construction because that's typically what a short form before, really. Can you hold on just one second? Mm -hmm. um, so um, you can, uh, if the chairperson calls you back up, come state your name again. But I just wanted to give you the chance to respond to the existing, to the, if you're finished with, um, responding to the comments from the, the three people that spoke against, that's number one. And then if you are, then uh, the chairperson can definitely call you back up and if you have another question. So I just wanna give you a chance to finish. Sure. Um, I think the other thing to note was the uh, existing sewage, um, the amount. Now, internally this was um, plumb to the heritage. Um, all we are doing is taking the flows for that proposed development and because of the HCR process, we have to provide separate lines. Um, I think there are, you know, our, you know, our intent um, for the primary uh, solution would be to gravity. I think there are options um, that we can discuss and look into in terms of a force main potentially that might be a little less disruptive, um, but I think the, the initial intent working with the city was to gravity and connect into East Glen. And with that. I, I don't remember if there were any other questions from the, I think Bruce answered all the other questions I think I, raised by the other speakers. Yes. Okay, so. 
Yeah. So, so people have to come up to the podium. Yep. And then I think after you speak, sir, if um, I know he had a question. Yeah, I'm John Brennan from Vern Castell and Pickard. I'm the attorney for Loretto. Uh, there was mention of uh, DEC wetlands or Army Corps. They're non existent in this site. Uh, and for the record, uh, all of these contentions that have been raised by uh, the neighbors in this instance have all been remedied in past applications. This is all rehashing things that have been long settled, and any argument to the contrary just isn't the case. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a few additional questions. Why don't we proceed back to the podium again, and for the record, your name address and you raised your hand yes um, uh, since you're closest why don't you go first your name and address and then f additional comments beyond what you had offered earlier this evening. Stearns and 411 East Glen Ave directly below the Tebow uh, I don't know if I can add to my comments but because the previous people were talking about existing old clay lines that were going to do the sewage and then overflow was going to be conducted through that, like uh, even just storm drains, not even, we're talking not even the sewage lines. Now that we know that there's going to be an easement for, that's a whole new problem in my opinion, because now we're talking about actual mechanical machines that are digging new lines and placing new pipes along the same pipes that are there. That's forest land, that's all woods. You have to take down trees, you have to get up past my property, either from above or below, to get right to that exact parallel line on a daily basis to make that pipeline, which I don't know how long it would take, but it certainly takes a lot of machinery and a steep grade like this to make a safe pipeline, uh, new and parallel, I don't know, there's not enough information for me to really, I would never be able to make a decision not knowing how much trauma just putting the machinery in, let alone the pipe itself, to our neighborhood and the whole, the whole forest above us. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Camarado, you had additional comments to add as well? I have a question about the lines. Excuse me, thank you very much. Uh, you say that you're running a parallel line. Where do those lines connect into? They have to connect into Sir, the system. We, oh, again, for the record, your name. Yes. And oh, yes. John Camarada, and I reside at 416 East Glen Avenue. And my question, my question concerns the, uh, this, this new, the new lines that are being run, and she indicates that there are parallel lines, but she has to tap into some existing system to outlet those lines. Either are you planning to run new lines all the way down East Glen Avenue to, to South Salina? Why, why don't you put the question out there and then okay. instead of having the back and forth, then we'll have them come up to the okay. uh, microphone and provide their answer so that can be recorded as well. So that, that's fine. If you I, get your concerns yes. out additionally beyond what you had before, and we can ask them to return, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, that, that's a major concern because uh, there may be uh, existing inert lines up there, but they all tap in to the East Glen Avenue line. And if they're not tapping into the existing eight inch line, that means they have to be running new lines all the way down the street, which creates another, another problem. Uh, one of which is I, I have property there and uh, it's, it's private property. So they would be actually uh, probably uh, trespassing over private property. Uh, as to Mr. Brennan's comments that these are settled issues, they've never been settled. Perhaps to him, his law firm, firm has benefited from Loretto over the years, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's not, not accurate. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. All right, just a point of to the chair. Um, we, I know we are considering this as companion pieces, but I know we would also have a point where we could discuss as the evening goes on whether we're proceeding as jointly with these or if we want to proceed separately. Right. And, 
and, and I just and now the speakers I think are coming back to issues that we've covered before. I just think in the interest of fairness to everybody, we want to remind them of that that we're looking at a the subdivision or first, and and then we have the new business issue which we can consider That's separately. Right. So I, this I think is probably the last speaker before we return to the yeah. applicant, and then we'll probably move on. Point of, a point of clarification, Kathy Stribley, 316 Monticello Drive North. Um, I, was, I got down to see these plans today, and I was trying to sort through what was happening as well. And if what the applicant is saying is they're going to build a new line, and this is what I, across the back of this parking lot, this is a wooded area, and it starts to go down. So you're really going, almost going downhill there. And so what my neighbor is saying who lives downhill from there, um, and, I, and I don't know what they're planning on doing. This, this is a wetland area. It's called the Glen because it's a Glen. There's springs coming out of here and, a, and the headwaters of City Line Brook, which come down through her yard and um, and then down into the uh, city line, and down into Valley Plaza, uh, and then down on Anaga Creek. Um, so this would impact the slope area downhill, all, all the slope area downhill, and I don't know if they're impacting um, this Glen area or not, but it is, it is a wetland, and it is protected, and it is, uh, DC has been up there many times. They didn't know it was there. We've taken them up there. Uh, they do know it's there. So um, I would. I think we need some clarification on what's going on here. Anyway. Would you, would you please use the microphone and provide your name Simply before the incorrect comments. statement on Ms. Dribley's part. She may call something wetlands. She may call something, please forgive me. She may call something wetlands. This New York State does not recognize that. The United States Army Corps of Engineers does not recognize that. It is simply not the case. Try building You have the opportunity for um, additional clarification for the most recent comments. If you wish to take advantage of that opportunity, you're welcome to do so now. All right. So um, our plans show that sanitary sewer easement. What I heard was where are we connecting um, that sanitary sewer easement or sanitary sewer to? Um, we, are co we are connecting into the East Glen Avenue system. Um, we have vetted the plans with the San Syracuse Sanitary Sewer. Um, they have had a chance to look at this and provide comment and feedback. Um, we do understand there is going to be some issues with constructability, um, you know, but at the same time, um, if we decide to do a, a force main to make that same connection, we're still going to be requiring a 20-foot wide easement. Maybe less disturbance, um, but we're still looking tonight for the overall subdivision parcel request and approval of the easements that we're showing to date. Are, this, are the easements separate from the subdivision, though? On the, on the, on the I'm asking staff, sir. Staff, sorry. Well, they're shown on the subdivision map because we've had several meetings with city department heads including water who had concerns about some of these um i'm not going to speak intelligently about it because i don't know enough it's not my bailiwick but um access right Heather, lack of access yeah to water. it's um because you're separating the building and you can't feed off of mm -hmm. through another building right I think, um, and because of the resubdivision now, it's not one lot anymore, so mm -hmm. you're going across lot lines. Um, I was not aware of new sewers going underground because that simply doesn't show on a, a site plan, um, but I do know that the water department requested that they 
put easements on, but access easements is was my understanding. So maybe if you can clarify that, because I'm not as, as I can't sure. speak that intelligently about it. And I will do my best. Um, so yes, the water water department did um, request us to clear up the easements up here along um, uh, Brighton Avenue because uh, it's public all the way over all the way over the bridge to the meter and we're proposing our separate lines and meter to be adjacent to the existing so the city wanted to see an, an easement so that they could come on and access any valves any lines um, if needed on the Loretto parcel um, we then have another easement that brings our um, dedicated lines to our facility here. The proposed sanitary sewer easement has been shown the whole time. Um, this has always, this has been since when we came to meet with pre-development. Um, to date, we've had no concerns with sanitary, with the city in this making this um, proposed layout and connection. Um, they have looked at this and, you know, that's where we are to date. are from one corporate entity of Loretto to another. They're not public easements, except for the easement that grants the city access to the water meter pit. Otherwise, the easements are simply because all the property is owned by Loretto, but it has different mortgages on different pieces, and the easements are simply from one Loretto entity to another, so that there is a, uh, what would you say, so that the city is So, so my question to staff is, if you look at the new parcel, you're providing a, a public easement for the city to access that piece of, that right down, no, down at the other corner. I'm sorry, I go to the new parcel, right there. So there's an easement, right, that little, that little piece. This piece? It's a public easement so the city can get in there to access the san new sanitary line, right? No, my understanding and is that this is uh, an easement um, between Fahey and um, the Heritage um, for this line, because our line is now coming out the back side of the building and crossing over new lot 1A over the Fahey residence and down connecting into the public main. A different site map I'm trying, I can't see there. Right. You only bring, I have a- Nope, nope, I'll find it in here somewhere. Just give me a second. So, I say this one's helpful too because it's in color. Oh, so I see. So again, <laughs> going back to what I just said a minute ago, if we were to approve the subdivision, which is lot 1B, the easements fall outside of that and on adjacent parcels owned by Loretto. Yeah. So in approving the lot, we are not necessarily approving this easement. On the, that's part of the, the new business item. Well, you're approving the map. In essence, you are approving a map that is to be filed at the county clerk's office. So whatever is on that map is the legal subdivision of land and all of its things that go with it. So lot 1A and lot 1B, 1A does have a piece of the easement on it. So that would be part of the subdivision. But all this, but the majority of what happens over here is not part of the, of the, two, of the two lots we're talking about. That would come under the new business item, wouldn't it? Well, it, it is indirectly related because it's going well, over I, there. Well, it's sort of a but for. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, unless the site plan for the new business item shows these. No, I, I've got my answer. Do you know what I mean? Okay. No, no, I've got my answer. It, it's part of it's procedural, part of it's not. So, so if we approve the subdivision, we're approving this, which means when we get to the zoning question, we could it be done to deny that. All right. Finished your additional <laughs> clarifications. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank all the individuals who spoke uh, for or against the project for sharing your views. Um, and now we will declare this hearing closed and move to our next application, please. One or two. No, our next item. Oh, that's right. That's right. Just right. review. That's right. So the next public hearing is R1847. This is a resubdivision to combine two properties into one new lot at 337 and 339 Richmond Avenue. The Greater Syracuse Property Development Corporation is the owner and the applicant for both properties and they both lie within a residential class A zoning district. Here I am, good evening. Mine are gonna be easy. Um, I'm Terry Luckett from representing the Greater Syracuse Land Bank, 431 East Fayette Street. 339 Richmond Ave is a vacant single family dwelling that was seized, seized for back taxes <coughs> and transferred to the land bank in January of 2016. 337 Richmond Ave is a vacant non-buildable lot that measures 33 feet wide. It was transferred to the land bank in July of 2018. Our strategy is to list the property for sale um, for renovation for a buyer to, to purchase it and renovate it in, in a year's time. Uh, the resubdivision provides the new potential owner of the property with defensible space, improves the likelihood that the property will sell and return to the tax rolls. Okay, thank you. Questions for the applicant? Thank you very much. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come forward. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. Uh, no additional speakers, so we'll declare this hearing closed. Move to our next one. Terry, which, I'll have you stay there, I, and I'll stay here to, to <laughs> streamline this a little bit. So R1850 is a resubdivision to combine two properties into one new lot, 302 and 304 West Beard Avenue. The Greater Syracuse Property Development Corporation is the owner and the applicant, and both properties lie within a residential class AA zoning district. Terry Luckett again, Greater Syracuse Land Bank, 431 East Fayette Street. 304 West Beard Avenue was acquired by the land bank in December of 2015. The building at 302 West Beard was demolished by the land bank just this September. The assessor's records show 304 West Beard as a single family structure, but it's actually configured as a two family. Uh, it has 2,300 square feet of living space. Since the zone is RAA and allows two family, our strategy for returning the property to productive use is to apply for a change in occupancy, which we have, and to renovate it as a two family dwelling. We're going to sell it to a nearby neighbor, and that deal has been, is in the works uh, as a rental property. However if, we, however, if we were to install the required parking at the rear of 304, a variance would be needed to waive the lot coverage requirements, and the resubdivision of 302 West Beard Ave solves that problem. I, I could go on and, and talk about how it's not likely that, that uh, the vacant lot will be used for infill construction because there's many, many. I think you attached your earlier um, position on that. Was that in this application of the previous one of yes, abundance? Yes, it's, it's of the same strategy. Okay. Okay. 
So questions for? So 304 was demolished? 302 was demolished. 304 is going to be rehabbed. Is that 302? Yes. And so 304 is to the west? Yes. Okay. So say what you said again about this, something about this lot would provide parking for that, the new? What well, 304 is going to be rehabbed as a two family. Okay. Required parking in the back of just 304, we would exceed the lot coverage. Ah, okay, got it now. So adding the got extra it. land, okay, how's that? There is a proposed site plan in your report. The applicant still let the podium additional questions. No, wait, so this shows the parking is on the side lot then? Yes. It doesn't show it behind the house. I was saying if I, if I were to put it behind the house yes. without a subdivision, then we would exceed lot coverage. But if you put it behind the house instead of up by the front, instead of putting it essentially where the house used to be, if it was behind the house, you could just still have all the yard on the side, is what I'm saying, as, as opposed to- might actually push that back because we're afraid of settling. So that actually might get pushed back further. So that, that was the concern that I rose, be, that, I, that, that came to mind, is using the side, using the former house site as a parking lot, as opposed to putting the parking behind and then all of that could just be the yard for this house. That, it might work out that way, Chris. Say about that because it's a resubdivision. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Further questions? Thank you. Okay. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the front. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application, please come forward. No other speakers, so we'll declare wait, this. Wait, wait, I have another question. I'm not going to give up on this yet. <laughs> so in this zoning classification, to put parking in that location as the drawing currently shows, does that require approval by anybody? Can it just be done by right? Well, they would need um, a permit, and it would be rooted around to different departments, and our department would look at it, and if you would like to encourage on the record a different configuration we can certainly work with so encouraged them to it's my understanding that as, as long as it's behind the front set setback it's okay but I, I get what you're saying I, I would like it behind the house like all the other houses on the street where they have garages and parking as opposed to where there used to be a building I mean that's what I'm encouraging yeah. So yeah, you, yeah. it's a two-family proposed? Yes. So you need only two, two parking spaces are required. So there, there are more uh, proposed the, the than owner are required. wanted more. Um, but we can certainly work with, because uh, you haven't sold this yet. You're, no, it's in the works. It's yeah. being, re, it's being um, rehabbed. Yeah, there's, again, there's no objection to the number of spaces if you want more than what's required. It's thinking about the, the, the building line on the street, and it's one thing that this is gonna be a 100 foot wide frontage, which is an anomaly, except for one corner lot based at least on what I was just looking. So rather than put parking in the anomaly, if it was green space, I think that's more consistent with the character of the neighborhood. So my recommendation would be to put the parking behind the existing house and use the new side yard as the yard for this property. That's a recommendation, obviously, so. I agree with you. <laughs> okay, other questions, thoughts, recommendations? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Uh, are th I lost track of my place you here. You were declaring the hearing closed <laughs> when Chris made comments. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, all right, thank you for getting me back on track, all right. Next hearing, you please. Declare it closed again. Uh, we'll declare this hearing closed <laughs> and move to our next one, which I think is going to involve the same. Uh, All right. 
And the players. next public hearing is R1851. This is also a resubdivision to combine three properties into one new lot at 128 to 130, 134, and 138 Baker Avenue. Denise Welch and the Greater Syracuse Property Development Corporation are the owners and applicants, and these properties all lie within a residential class AA zoning district. Tari Luckett, Greater Syracuse Land Bank, 431 East Fayette Street. 138 Baker Ave is a single family home owned by Denise Welsh. The home was sold to Ms. Welsh in 2017 by Home Headquarters, which purchased the property from the land bank in 2016. This property was previously combined with 134 Baker Ave. 128-30 Baker Ave is the vacant lot next door. It's irregularly shaped and measures approximately 45 feet times 126 feet. It was transferred to the land bank in August of 2018. This resubdivision is a difficult decision for us at the land bank. In a more robust housing market, it would make the most sense to sell the lot for new uh, construction infill. The land bank currently owns 228 residential building lots and 227 non-buildable lots. Many of these can be assembled for large infill sites, but many buildable lots, including 128-30 Baker, are not likely places for new construction in the next 20 to 30 years. It's not realistic for us to hold this lot in the hopes that it will support infill development. Until the housing market improves, we feel this vacant lot will require interim stewardship and the neighbors are the best suited to perform that. Okay, thank you. Questions from the commission members? There's a 17 foot wide driveway. We're aware of that and we will take care of it by narrowing it to 12 feet up to the front setback. Welsh is here too if you have any questions. Hey, I think uh, we're set with questions up here. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. So no additional speakers will declare this hearing closed and move on to our next hearing. Next public hearing is 3S 1825. This is a three mile limit. Review in the town of DeWitt. This is to realign two properties into two new lots. The Donovilia Track subdivision, 6881 to 6883 East Genesee Street. And the owner is Adrian Dunawila. The applicant is here. Please come forward to provide your name, address, and a summary of the proposal. No applicant. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the podium. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application? If so, please come forward. Uh, no speakers of any kind. The application is complete, I take it. Um, so we'll declare this hearing closed and move to, I think, what might be our final hearing for this evening. Yes, the last public hearing is 3S 1826. This is also a three mile limit. Subdivision review, this is in the town of Salina. This is to combine seven uh, parcels into one new lot at 103 and 111 Luther Avenue and 113 and 117 Old 7th North Street. Uh, Unifirst, Unif Yes, Unifirst Corporation is the owner and applicant. Thank you. If the applicant is here, please come forward and provide your name and address and a summary of the application. Thank you. Hi, uh, Vincent Ryan uh, on behalf of uh, Unifirst Corporation uh, from Keplinger Freeman Associates, 6320 Fly Road. Uh, it's a three acre site. Uh, there's currently five buildings that are being demolished. Um, one building will be uh, reconstructed 
and uh, the process is for a three mile subdivision uh, going from the seven current lots that they that exist uh, to one uh, conducive lot. Okay, questions? Well, that was very concise, thank you. Thanks. Are there individuals who would like to speak in favor of this application? If so, please come to the front of the room. Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the application, please come forward. No additional speakers will declare this hearing closed. Thank you very much. Typically, we would, now that our public hearing schedule for the evening is completed, we would go back to the beginning of the list and try to find um, uh, consensus and uh, action on each of the items heard and closed tonight. We will still try to do that, but before we do that, I'd like to take uh, one item out of order, if we might, which is the next item of business, which is under the classification of minor modification. Um, I think it perhaps is just that, and so that the two representatives um, aren't with us for the whole rest of the evening, not that we would object to that, but it might be possible to dispense with this item fairly quickly. So let's see, give it a try and see what happens. If you would, please. Okay, so uh, this is a minor modification to SP 1618M3. This is a special permit modification to a restaurant to modify the floor plan at 1200 to 1224 East Genesee Street. The applicant is requesting to modify the floor plan um, to customize this for an incoming tenant and what they're doing is um, if you if you recall the special permit is only on the uh, office class B portion of the property it's a split zoning parcel and um, you last approved this uh, on November of 2016 now this included customer area of 1865 square feet um, part of it was indoors and this proposal reduces the um, interior customer area to 510 square feet inside. It was 530. Um, what they're doing is uh, removing the bathrooms and locating them in a central corridor uh, for use of other patrons within the building and therefore rearranging some things. Um, you have purview over special permit uh, changes and so that's why this is before you as a minor modification. Okay, thank you. Well, um, I don't think you are hearing objections, so I move approval and ne negative declaration. Second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Any abstentions? This minor modification is approved. Sorry, we didn't get to hear your presentation. <laughs> Gee, it was really but good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Trying to save you money. <laughs> you could like you could you could leave the notes if you'd like. You could certainly stay. Thank. <laughs> you could stay. You Thank you both very much. Um, okay, here we go. It was indeed uh, simple and straightforward. So now we return to the hearings that were heard earlier this evening, and I, we left the hearings open, so we can begin at the top. Well, the first one is we indicated on hold where we didn't have complete information, so, and there were no speakers for that one anyways. That brings us to the subdivision application for Emerson and Willis <coughs> R-18-43, Canyon case to follow later on. Is there a motion 
on the resubdivision application. Move approval with a negative declaration. Second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? The resubdivision is approved. Now we move to the project site review for PR-18-32 at the same location. This one is more involved. This is no waivers, correct? staff a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. When what I would consider collateral matters are raised, when someone says, not the applicant, but someone associated with the applicant had a number of problems, is the commission allowed to look into those other issues? Are we allowed to ask the office to examine the other issues? Because what we have here is an applicant who's related to someone who may have had a prior history with a, with a similar property. Okay, so project site review, the whole purpose is design. It is how is the building designed? What are the alterations that happen to this building on the site and the, the facade? Well, here they painted it green and they, they are proposing to make some alterations. As a result of that, we refer this out to other departments who commented on that. One of the um, items of discussion very heavily tonight was DPW transportation planners comments. So that is what we are looking at tonight and that is what, uh, what is the purview of the board. It is an industrial class A zoning district. It's a retail proposal that is allowed by right um, if they weren't resubdividing or making any changes to the property, the commission wouldn't see the proposal at all. Um, zoning does not control behavior, quality of product, or uh, operator. Um, you know, we, we just, the police control those kinds of things. So. Um, as far as zoning perspective, we can look at the impacts on uh, traffic, uh, pedestrian safety, facade alterations, color, materials, um, and I, do, I don't think they proposed any signage, but signage could be also something. Um, so to answer your question, the long way, um, through a project site review, no. So our, for the record, our purpose is merely, once we've done what we should do with the subdivision issue, we, the site plan is all we look at here. And the facade alterations. So they, they did change the color of the building to, to green, and I think they're uh, changing an overhead door to a man door. So. Those things are what is under consideration with respect to this application. Are there any questions in this application that might go for review to the Common Council? Uh, I don't think there's any encroachments and that would be the only thing I can think of that the Common Council would have a review of. Thank you. And for the record, I'm, I'm, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion for the record, recognizing we've spent several nights on this and had this on hold uh, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So I'll move approval with a negative declaration. There a second? I second it. Any discussion? 
Would you consider modifying your proposal so that all of the tr city transportation engineers' recommendations were met? Which have to do with the width of the driveway, the screening, curbing for the areas that will be paved and that they should be paved, not be gravel? step back, take that friendly amendment, and say, acknowledging that there are transportation notes that were extensive in, in, our, in our packet, um, and also making it clear that we know no one entity, no one department can waive what we waive. I'll make that criticism too. And then move approval of a negative declaration. Amendment uh, or adjusted with a friendly amendment. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? So, with the conditions noted, the project site review is approved. Next, we're at SP 18 22, the West Fayette Street site for the special permit for the amusement and recreation facility. I would move approval with a negative declaration on the condition that the previous conditions regarding the sidewalk from the public right of way to the main entrance be implemented. Second. Discussion. Were there waivers on this one? No. No, no waivers. Okay. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? This special permit is approved. That takes us to the Burnett Avenue Project SP-18-23 for the restaurant in the 3400 block of Burnett. Uh, this one does have a number of waivers. Some of these waivers from our original material have been um, eliminated, I believe, in the discussion this evening. Four, I thought, five, six, seven. Um, I'll go for the easiest one. I think the ground signed issue was, was resolved because they're, by taking the name of the deli off the sign, it reduced the size of the square foot uh, but is, size of the ground. Hmm? But is the remaining ground size, would the remaining ground sign still be larger because it's double-sided? Yes, and I think we came to 11 square feet. Yeah, and because it's in the right-of-way, um, you can't waive anything. So All right. it would need to be on private property in order for you to waive that. So they could, you could propose or suggest that they move the ground, the ground sign proposed in the right of way on private property, and make any suggestions with respect to the size as well. shrunk those number that number even further with that section F uh, just until there's clarification on that section F G was remember G was G was the one she was sorry lost someplace A, B, C, D, e, F. Yeah, I don't know where G is right so take 17 out of the 132 numbers I cited in the uh, your staff report did not include uh, the 17 for G because I did not see them so I did not count them. Uh, 
Yeah. Radical. I did not see with my little eyes. <laughs> so 115 yes. requested for the waiver still stands, stands. Yes. in light of what we heard tonight. Okay, thank you. We still have a waiver needed for the arterial. Yeah, that's yeah, that doesn't change. Yes. Okay. Oh, we took care of curbing. Basically, we still need all the waivers. Yes, even with the new plan. Yes, items 16, 17, 18, 20, and 21 still stand as deviations. Wait, did you say you didn't say 19? We resolved 19. Did no, you say 19? Uh, Mr. Pitcher said during the public hearing mm -hmm. that they would. Uh, do what they needed to do. Remove the restaurant and either remove the sign or reduce mm -hmm. the sign to no more than nine square feet as a directional sign. And then the remaining, the other ground sign falls within allowable sizes. Okay. Well, Whoop. the other ground sign is the right of way. Yes. And that goes back to, yeah, okay. So it's if that's over and above 40 square feet, Okay. Okay. We still have that, yeah. Let's go to the common council. Mm Okay, I'm, I'm going to make a motion to approve with a negative declaration, but I need to walk through all of the waivers to make sure I understand what we're talking about here. So number 16 is the waiver for the parking spaces. Um, and I am proposing approving that in light of the fact that one of the major retail spaces is not functioning. And I understand that the special permit goes with that restaurant, but it could be a dry cleaning establishment and we'll grapple with that in the future. Um, granting the waiver that talks about the distance from the driveways to the property line, because that's a pre-existing condition. Um, curbs provided along the edges, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to skip 18 for a minute. 19, we're all set with the sign one, correct? We, nope. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why am I having an issue with the sign thing tonight? 
if the if the if the sign were on private property you could waive it right so i'm saying i can't grant that waiver i'm right so what that was either you can offer a suggestion that they move it okay and reduce it or not grant it and then they well i can't couldn't we, have it we can't grant it because it's in the in the right of way yes so then the recommend so not granting that waiver but making the recommendation that it be moved on to the property and fall within the design requirements of the signing ordinance okay. okay and 20 is minimum of eight feet so they provided screening but it's not eight feet in width correct okay. so granting that waiver and then the sidewalks are also not nope they, they now they show that they show they that so i can ignore that one so then i just have to go back to 18 which is the curbing at the rear of the property around all of the parking and not granting that and putting the curbing in. Wow, I think I got them all. Did you intend to include the arterial setback? Oh, yeah, what number was that one? 21. Oh, yep, yes, and granting that. Okay. Is that clear which waivers are in and which yes, are not in for this motion? <laughs> and there's um, a motion in fact, is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion on the motion? Yeah. Oh. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? So that special permit is approved. I move to R-18-46, the proposed resubdivision for the Loretto project on Fillmore Ave. Um, be fine with me a suggestion to pause on this and move on to the next. Okay, we'll return to that one momentarily. Uh, we have our next one, which is the resubdivision on Richmond Ave, R-18-47. Is there a motion on this? I move approval with a negative declaration. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. <laughs> Any abstentions? Our next resubdivision is R-18-50, the project on West Beard Avenue. Is there a motion on this? negative declaration noting that staff take the previous comments into consideration when consulted about the parking yep. mm -hmm. so noted further discussion all in favor please say aye. aye aye those opposed say nay any abstentions that resubdivision is approved we have yet another resubdivision r-18-51 the project on baker avenue is there a motion on this? I move approval with a negative declaration. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? That recept division is approved. Our first three mile limit is 3S 18 25 tonight in the town of DeWitt. Is there a motion on this? Move approval with a negative declaration. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? Our last three mile limit is 3S 18 26 in the town of Salina. Is there a motion on this? Move approval with a negative declaration. Second. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? That three mile limit subdivision is approved. Now, Cycle back to R-18-46. This is the resubdivision for the Loretto project. Um, I have a process question. 
question regarding the companion piece under new business. Um, there was concern by many people who came to the podium about having a public hearing for this. Could you just explain whether or not that's possible and when it is? It is possible. If I can just find the place. Um, it is under the discretion of the commission to hold a public hearing on a project plan or not. Um, so you're welcome to uh, authorize a hearing for that. But if you want me to read the direct rules and regulations, I will. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I trust you that you're not making that. you want me to read this I can read it um, so um, prior to the issuance of any building permit for the construction of any new structure or parking or access facilities in the zone a project plan for the facility to be constructed must be submitted to the City Planning Commission for its review and approval the Commission must also find that the project plan is in substantial conformance which the di with the district plan that it makes adequate provision for fire and police access, drainage and utilities, and that it meets other applicable regulations within its jurisdiction. The commission may call a public hearing on project plans at its discretion. Thank you. That one we should have a motion if we want to do that when we get to that one. Mm -hmm. And we should probably first. Um, yeah, the three for this one, I, I, I think we don't have our attorney here for staff tonight, mm -hmm. but it's, this seems like a situation we've had in the past where perhaps more information would be helpful mm -hmm. before we actually vote on this issue. Mm -hmm. And maybe a motion to reopen it so we could continue the yeah, hearing mm -hmm. would be appropriate. So I would move to reopen. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Say nay. Abstention? So we'll reopen the resubdivision hearing, R-18-46, and when the law department representative is here, um, we can present additional questions mm -hmm. or points mm -hmm. needed for clarification, take that into account before making a decision, uh, final decision on that resubdivision application. Is that mm -hmm. yes. the plan? Okay. Yeah. So now our minor modification was approved. We're now moving to the new business, which is the project plan review. We heard extensive comments tonight, both from the in terms of the presentation, comments and clarification regarding those comments made against. Uh, lots of speakers tonight on this one. Is there a consensus on the commission for moving this forward in one manner or another? I think in light of the concerns expressed by members of the public for a public hearing that we should have a public hearing. I agree. Agree. So we should go on record uh, to that. Um, Do we that need a motion or just? I think a so motion would be in order. Second. Discussion on the motion to uh, authorize a public hearing for this project plan review. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? So we will authorize a hearing for that. Would that be um, at our next meeting or in consultation with the applicant to know when uh, 
additional materials might need to be compiled to present at a public hearing. Um, would you give some guidance as to what additional materials you would like to see so that I can communicate that to the applicant if they need to revise anything or provide more information or to other city departments, for instance, perhaps the water department or engineering department? Well, clearly there's a concern about whether or not <clears throat> the project um, will have an impact on existing sanitary resources that are available, facilities. So I think we're, we need more detailed information from the applicant in terms of how they assessed what the project will generate and how that relates to what the existing system can accommodate. And I think we also have to have an understanding of, from a construction perspective, what the impacts of constructing that will have on the environment. And the neighborhood. And the neighborhood. There definitely seem to be two separate opinions about whether or not there were designated wetlands. It'd be good if we could get a definitive response from the state agency that does that. Okay. And we did not ask, but at this point we don't need to now, but the, the issue of snow removal I think would probably be something we'd want to have the applicant be able to address at a public hearing. Removal or storage? Or, or both well, maybe. removal slash storage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there other issues or topics that we can identify now to ask the applicant to prepare for? The only thing I would add is just that since since we're talking about the easement and we're talking about the, the drainage issue, there, the piece about the utility, the fact that, that the, the city department would need to have, mm -hmm. I think they call it a closet, mm -hmm. but to have th that access. Mm -hmm. right. I think just fitting all those pieces together would help us. Mm -hmm. The water Say department right. has to have access somewhere in the property, somewhere in the building. I think it was up in the northwest corner of the, northeast corner of the site. N well, from my understanding, it's that the, it's not that the water department right. has to have access, but it's that the they're crossing underneath property lines. So yeah. that mm -hmm. has to be granted because they're going to be different property lines. That would be like if your neighbor wanted to right. put a sewer across your not lot. Not different right. property lines. So, but, but I, there is an, there issue, is an about, issue about, I think it was up in the northeast corner, mm -hmm. which has less impact on anything. I think it's just the water department addressing, do they need to have something on the property? Right. right. Just have them review that again. But I think a particular concern is going to be the construction of this and the impact that will happen during construction and obviously subsequent to, but. Yeah. I'm wondering if you, um, if we don't have comments in here on that new business item, if you'd like me to get comments from yes. the water department and engineering about that yes. subsurface yes. stuff, because I know that will be handled um, when building permits are pulled, and we won't necessarily, see, mm -hmm. we might not see that, um, but they, those two departments are mm -hmm. likely to be involved in, and consulted. So yeah. maybe I can, uh, I don't know if I need more detailed information from the applicant, but at least uh, maybe have a mini meeting with DPW Engineering to see, uh, not DPW, sorry, water. Engineering and Water to, to address these very specific things. Is that, is that? Well, I, clearly if we have a public hearing, the questions are gonna be raised by okay. the public in addition to right. the members of the commission. And so, it would be helpful to yep. have any of those things addressed or revised it, beforehand absolutely. so that, because yep. I know there are time constraints yep. uh, as mm -hmm. with all projects mm -hmm. uh, and time frames that you have to work with it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank Great. you. Okay, so we have a way forward on that one. I think with the exception of the 2019 schedule and the hearing authorizations for next month's meeting, first meeting, the our agenda, or are there? No, please, no. <laughs> please say um, no. But yeah. I would like to say that now you have 16 public hearings for 
Well, your December meeting. Now, here's a, a you originally had something scheduled for New Year's Eve. I believe December 31st. You should, we should save all those for New Year's Eve. It's the right. only way to go out. So we had proposed in this new schedule to start instead of that one, January 7th. But you could also add another meeting in December. I know it's a busy time for not only applicants, but also you all. So um, if you wanted to break up. What do you say? Christmas Eve and stuff. Instead of New Year's Eve, Christmas Thanks, Eve. Jeff. <laughs> so I'm just throwing options out there. Um, because the December 10th meeting that, that is it's getting to be a really full agenda and um, who knows where the complications might lie in some of these proposals where there's going to be some extended discussion um, and participation so I think I'd be very open to adding another meeting in December to um, okay, let me see. Pull off some. I mean, we don't have to necessarily decide tonight, but soon we'd probably need to figure well, that out. You should, you should, because people are scheduling things and they want to mm -hmm. get on this or this agenda. So, um, if you, well, well, no, you couldn't. I mean, it would be Christmas. Eve. It would be Christmas. Eve. Well, that's just not happening. <laughs> well. Christmas Eve. <laughs> Could there be a meeting between Christmas and New Year's? Yes, the 27th or 20th. I don't know what days of the week. 27th is a Thursday. So the 20th. Christmas is Tuesday, so the 26th then. <laughs> probably well, be the same day. Two meetings in one week. Seventeenth. Anyway. Um, you could have one on the tenth and one on the seventeenth. Yeah. You could have one on the tenth and, and one on the the thirteenth. Uh, they don't have to necessarily be on a Monday. So wait. So here's a question. So by having the two meetings, we're going to go back to this list and split them. Well, I'm I'm just throwing out options. Well, the short answer is I mean, you yeah. do have the authority over your own agenda, and your own mm -hmm. or the discretion under the. I, I guess I'm. This is where I'm going with this. If we're already going to go back to this list and split it among dates, can some of these just wait to the seventh? Like some of the resubdivisions. If there are land bank resubdivisions, is it, with all due respect, to those those tend not to be projects where there's a construction project tied. Right. They're not. They're applications that don't necessarily have a construction project tied to them. So would waiting to the seventh for any of those be a a big um, burden? Well, there are probably none because I just said that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and look at that. I don't think any of them are. I mean, well, it was a good idea for the no. moment that I had it. So None of them are. Yeah. And you know what? This, six. yeah. Mm. There's six resubdivision and well, five resubdivisions and one three mile limit. So typically, those take um, a shorter time. But I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to make the decision of who who stays and who, who goes. goes into line A and who <laughs> um, goes into line B. So, hmm. um, but but we we're still saying we would do that anyway. It's just we would have the meeting so close together, somebody might not complain. Correct. Yeah. It takes me about 45 minutes to 
Oh. Yeah, we, we trust it. We want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Try. We really want to go. Um, actually, what about Rebecca's recommendation? All right, fine. Five, five. And can we could could we take like a thirty minute break so that we could that's a while. I would just think that in light of the holiday, it might be easier if we just kill ourselves for one night because we're already committed to being here anyway. I like the earlier start time and a little breather somewhere right. Right. halfway through the agenda or thereabouts. And that actually probably is easier than trying to get another meeting in. Mm. Mm -hmm. It might just be better to a little bit bite take a bullet, longer time. Bite the bullet and start an hour. Fortify ourselves with coffee and <laughs> sugar. I'll send the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she's on the last one on the list. <laughs> uh, so if we do that, there'll be 16 hearings, um, and we can start at 5 p.m. So we'll we'll try to make an extra effort to highlight that on all of our postcards and all the applicants. Let them know that it does. It will. Early. Okay, so with that in mind, mm. and I have to check with the city clerk to make sure that the available, yeah. So number two, the resubdivision that involves Holly Avenue, uh -huh. if, if that's in the National Register District, somebody should be prepared to address it so we don't have to spend 300 hours talking about that one. Just saying. Okay. Um, Are you um, rehearing the Loretto subdivision, or is that just on hold and you're hearing only the um, new business item, the project plan review. No, we reopened the okay, resubdivision so hearing okay. uh, to specifically get some input from the city's attorney. Okay. And auth we authorized the hearing for the site review. So we have a plan for our last okay. remaining meeting of the calendar year to start earlier, keep the same date. A little break somewhere in the middle um, for survival purposes. So that still has not addressed the 2019 calendar, and we need to get word out soon about, or at least the first quarter of the year, so that people. people do we can be do planning. we do we need a motion though to approve those public hearings? Did we do that? Yeah, you need so. a, a motion to authorize your hearings, and but. Do you want to go to the calendar first? I'm just following the order of the agenda. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I'm so traditional. We, we were standing. We were talking about it for so long. I thought we were doing that. Sorry. So I, I apologize. So we made an adjustment to the start time for our next meeting. That doesn't require a motion. Or just consensus of the commission. Yeah. You want something on record? Um, I, I would put it on record just to be safe. Um, you know. Sure. Is there a motion that do we settle on the time is five early enough or four thirty or what's reasonable? I would say five. Okay. I, I, you, you, five o'clock. All right. Is there a motion? People are to that? working. You want to give yeah, them a yeah. chance to get yeah. here. So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? So we have our settled on earlier start time for the December 10th meeting. Uh, now, the 2019 schedule, or as much of it as we want to commit to, to certainty right now so people can plan for the meeting dates, and they sync up with the council schedule as much as they can. Yes, we have 
uh, the county planning board schedule, the common council schedule, and um, the board of zoning appeal schedule. We've tried to, over the years, make them so that if someone needs to go to multiple boards, they are going in a streamlined fashion. Okay, um, good. So this this schedule. This is the board zoning appeal schedule I brought with me. It it is in line with what yep. we had last. So we don't have it yet. The our proposed schedule. You do. It's the last page in your agenda. Mm. Two fifty nine. No. No. Oh. Uh, don't tell me I did not put that on the drop yeah. off. <laughs> I don't see it, and I it's not it's not a, it's not at the agenda because I printed the agenda. And, I got all the pages, so. Wow. I'm looking at my friend. Highly desirable items, those 2019 schedules. People just snatch them up like you would. <laughs> <laughs> and there are, okay, there's one. Oh, actually, I will email it. Okay, so there's only one date where we have to move to a Tuesday. But this, we're going to run into that again next year. Yeah. 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 We, we, we might do this. We might I would, the same thing. I would recommend doing the same thing. There's the December 30th next year. Not much better than New Year's Eve. <laughs> so maybe we just do one long meeting. And, right. and just advise them in November not, not to agree to a big agenda item, big, big, big list anyway. Sure. So... If in November we say, let's try to keep the December meeting down to X number, and then if we end up on the 18th of November next year at holding three open, we're not going to be starting at 16 and adding to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe. Okay, well, let's get to see this, scan this quickly. Yes. Um, they're all Monday meetings with the exception of February. Because and Jeff is going to send it so we can put it in our calendar. Right. So is there a motion to adopt this schedule for 2019? So moved. Uh, second discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay, abstentions. We have a sc meeting schedule for 2019. I think that leaves us only with authorizations for the 10th of December for our marathon session. Is there a motion to authorize? 16. A boatload of hearings. <laughs> Um, so moved. 16 and counting, I guess. Second. Uh, Discussion? All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Abstentions? We have our authorizations for the 10th. Anything else come before the commission, or is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Whatever. Second. Discussion. Whatever we need. favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We are adjourned. Until five o'clock on the tenth. Yep, on behalf of the.